Hello, everybody. Welcome on in. Welcome on in. Welcome on into the uh, bi-weekly one-shot. Yeah. Uh, so, I guess we'll go ahead and start this. Um, we will introduce our characters that we will be playing today. We'll be starting off with um, Paul. Paul, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi. Uh, I am... Paul, otherwise known as your friendly neighborhood Paul, stream over on twitch.tv slash fnhpaul. Uh, and today I will be playing the bard, the uh, silver fox bard known as Baritone. And I'm sure I won't get singled out or targeted at all <laughs> during this for <laughs> trying to sing too much because, you know, that's life. Mm -hmm. He is the you kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, uh, we have Laura. Laura, go ahead and introduce yourself and your character. Hi, I'm Laura, and my character is Karia the Barbarian, and her mount Porkchop the Boar. <laughs> oh, God gotta pork love chop. pork chop. Um, next up, we have Liv. Liv, go ahead and introduce yourself and your character. Hi, I'm Liv. Um, <clears throat> occasionally, very occasionally, I stream on uh, twitch.tv slash the lady live uh, with underscores. And I will be playing Kyra, who is a shadow sorceress. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I, I sense that there's going to be some very interesting things happening between her and Baritone today. So. I just, I, I feel a headache coming on. I feel a headache coming on. Love and, you, boo. Mm, I love you. Uh, last but not least, we have Lance. Lance, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and the character you will be playing today. Uh, hi, my oh, name is you? Lance. I will be playing the character uh, Valen Rathmar, who is a tiefling and an Oath of the Watchers paladin and uh, is the goodest little boy assuming he's not fighting <laughs> <laughs> wonderful and last but not least i am sarah also known as queen corby on twitch i don't stream but you're more than welcome to follow um and i will be the dungeon master today so where to begin this story i think we will go ahead and start off in the city of uh grave moor um it's a fairly clear day. Um, there is a bunch of activity going on within the city. You know, children running around, playing. Um, people stopping to and fro from shops and um, stalls selling, you know, exotic wares, fruits, spices. Um, and we will start off with a crowd of people kind of surrounded within in the city center as they are watching a performance going on baritone what are you doing so baritone is kind of in kind of gathering around the people he's kind of making sure kiria is like up there as well you know we're we're just kind of like come on in come on in the show's about to begin you know Feel free to throw whatever copper or silver you may have in the hat if you enjoy the performance. And if you don't, well, we wish you all the best. Kind of glasses over, Kyria. So uh, what number do you want to do? Uh, during this, Kyra will be kind of like using prestidigitation to kind of like float several like collection hats and devices around the <laughs> the audience with some like magical flair around them and stuff like that um you know i don't know uh you just you go ahead and uh i'll be right behind you <clears throat> all right he uh takes his he just kind of does starts doing some snapping let me think Okay, so press doesn't do that. Okay. 
So he starts kind of snapping his fingers to a beat, tapping his foot, and then just kind of leans in and call me irresponsible. Call me in the and he's just kind of going into a song, just performing it, using a bit of prestidigitation to um kind of make it seem like there's he's glowing, like there's a light coming off of him to kind of draw more attention to it. Roll me a I'm performance check. This, I'm irresponsibly mad for you. Pointing over to Kira. Uh performance check. Yeah, should have had my dice closer to me. There we go. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Eeny, meeny, you know what? Rainbow die. Because this is not a... I should not use bloody die for this. Okay. Uh, that is going to be a... <laughs> that's going to be a dirty 20. I love how I can roll a 9 and get a dirty 20. <laughs> yeah. So you are <laughs> nailing your performance. You are gathering the attention of any um, passerbys that are kind of walking by. They're kind of like, oh, wow, look at the, the performance going on. And they're kind of like walking over and uh, seeing what's going on, watching the performance and enjoying what they're seeing. Um, Baritone, as you are... Um, kind of, you know, performing and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. Over the crowd of people, you see what appears to be a uh, small... Um, <laughs> a... <laughs> a small uh, halfling, which is rather odd, considering, you know, halflings are pretty short. Yeah, like, this, I'm not this, used to... This halfling is, like... perception-wise. Is... Above everybody else. And she is walking towards where you guys are. And she's, you know, she's kind of like just, you know, walking on in. And as they're getting closer, you see the crowd kind of like, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they're like backing up. And then you just see this big snout. As she makes her way to the front of the crowd. And Porkchop <laughs> is just like coming over and sniffing at you. He's like with it, he just kind of smiles, you know, like smiling, kind of going with it. And he's just like kind of brushing the snout away, like try not to have it get on the suit. <laughs> Roll me an animal handling, baritone. <laughs> animal handling. Okay. This one I don't have quite as high a uh, bonus to. Uh, it's going to be a 15. Okay. Um, it takes you a bit, like, you're, like, trying to push this snout away, and, uh, this, this boar seems to be very adamant on, like, sniffing you out, and then, you know, finally you kind of just, like, flick his nose a bit, <laughs> and he kind of, like, doubles back a bit, just, like, crinkling his nose a bit. I, I look up at the halfling. <laughs> hey, uh, doll, you mind getting your boar out of here? Come on, interrupting chop. the show. Or at least, you know, pull him back a little bit. And uh, Curry is going to kind of try to rein pork chop in a bit there. Curry, roll me an animal handling, please. Okay. Eighteen. Yep, so you kind of like pull on the reins a bit, like, come on, pork chop, let's go, let's move. And, you know, pork chop kind of like runs with you like pulling up back on the reins and Porkchop just starts walking away from the performance. Now, his focus now on the fruit stand that's about maybe 20 feet away from you guys. Just full on and run walking towards that. Um what's Balin doing? Um he's probably uh tied off Gavin close enough that he's within earshot but Valen is currently walking around by himself. Um, he probably you probably hear the singing come over. He he's a little curious. Okay. Uh, he definitely sees the uh, pork chop. 
So you you see as this big giant boar. Giant boar just full on walking towards this fruit stand and is now his snout is now in the baskets full of the, the these different fruits. And you see like this older elven gentleman, hey, get your pig out of here. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um curious how much for the fruit. <laughs> uh let me take a look here. <clears throat> It'd probably be about two copper pieces for a bushel. She's um how much for the whole basket since he's got oh, a snout in it? Um he'd probably a silver. <laughs> She's gonna give him a silver for the basket. <laughs> uh the gentleman takes the, the silver coin. Right. Thank you. And he kind of like slides the, <laughs> the bowl of fruit to you. <laughs> and Porkchop immediately just like digs into this bowl of fruit. His Porkchop, tail kind of swishing happily as he's eating. You really gotta get you on a diet, you fatty. <laughs> <laughs> um... I need all of you to make a dexterity save. <clears throat> but wait. No. Yes. <laughs> I don't have to because charisma? No. <laughs> I am so charismatic that it goes around me. <laughs> um, that's a 16 on the dex save. Okay. 22. Okay. Nine. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, we got nine. A nine Wait, we have three charisma. We have three charisma-based classes right now. I want y'all to be aware of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys are either distracted with a boar eating fruit, or you are <laughs> busy watching the performance or performing. All of a sudden, you got the ground starts shaking violently around you all as like this earthquake starts shaking up everything. Um, you notice a couple of the yeah. buildings, due to the weak foundations, kind of co start collapsing, and you start hearing people uh, panicking and, um, you know, <laughs> running. You see mothers grabbing their children, getting to the uh, inside one of the buildings, or trying to get out of, out of town away from the buildings because they, they don't know what the foundation's like. Um, Fallen oh, and Kira, you <laughs> fall over. You guys are prone now. You guys fall over uh, due to the, oh, my nose. The, sh the, the shaking. But Baritone and Karia, you're able to kind of like keep your footing. Uh, Porkchop kind of like stumbles, stumbles a bit, but he's too focused on eating. He doesn't even notice the earthquake. And eventually the earthquake stops. Um, Baritone's gonna immediately rush over to Kira. Oh, hey, doll, you all right there? Helps her up. Oh, yeah, that just took me off guard. I was kind of dancing and made me lose my step. Um, uh, Baritone immediately like sees like the hat or uh, collection hats and is immediately like, uh, fly me to the moon. Which yeah, he looks like, at Kira knowing, like, it, like, do we need, like, let's just get the fuck out? Like, yeah. and so, so we immediately, should, we immediately start, like, grabbing the hats. This. Yeah, we're, like, immediately gathering up all the coin, which, how much coin did we get for the performance, DM? Question. It was a dirty, uh, was a dirty 20, I think it was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Somebody check the tape. <laughs> So from the collection hats, uh, you managed to get ten gold pieces. Pretty Even cool. split. <laughs> that is not. That's a. That is a good fucking day. That is a good day. Um. He uh, he takes one of the hats and he kind of does a little flip and pops it on. 
<clears throat> she kind of uses Which... prestidigitation for all the other ones that she was using and just kind of like tucks them into her bag. Which, quick question, how tall is your girl? Five foot two. She's, five she's foot two. shorty. Perfect. I don't, it, my, dude, my guy's five foot eight. He's a 55 year old dude, five foot eight. He just like offers, like, he just kind of like sticks the arm out, like, well, shall we go then? <sighs> and let's go. And then he just kind of tucks the hat down. He's like, yep, time to get the fuck out of this place before shit starts going sideways. And like, starts kind of moving, like, with a sense of urgency, but not running. Because it's just like, nope, running gets you, uh, running will get you attacked. Fast moving objects. Um. <laughs> baritone yeah. as you are turning and starting to walk you notice black smoke on the mountain range in the distance from the from the city there's just big plumes of black smoke Maybe we should go the other way <laughs> that looks i don't know about that yeah, doll, I ain't gonna lie. That looks like that can cause some like issues. Volcano, maybe? Yeah, I don't... I don't think there was a volcano over there. I think it was... That was just a mountain range, right? Hmm. As far as you can maybe tell. Maybe the dwarves were mining some stuff? There's a lot of fire for some dwarves, though. Um, Are there any... City officials? Like, guard types? Um, you're looking around. There are a few guards, and they're kind of like muttering to them uh, among amongst themselves. Um, there are a few guards, kind of like patrolling, um, making sure no one got caught like under the rubble that fell, or yeah, um, helping out people like evacuate. Would we have garnered yeah. any knowledge about this place and like those mountain ranges while we were here? Or... Uh. Roll me a history check. No, oh, for fuck's sake. I'm not going to lie. There I don't is know something shit. very nice about a bard for the simple fact that I just have, like, bonuses for every fucking thing. That is kind of nice. I won't lie. Jack of all <laughs> trades. It's a wonderful thing. You got a five? Uh, let's say two, uh, 14 two. on the history. Um, You guys have been traveling around... Um. You've heard rumors of a dormant volcano, but you're not entirely sure where that oh. dormant volcano is. Um, Baritone's going to kind of look around a little bit and see, like, if there's anybody, like, really freaking out. Um, I mean, there are a few people kind of, like, freaking out because of the earthquake. Yeah. But, I mean, besides that, no, there's a lot of just confusion. Okay. Um, and curiosity. Okay, then I'm not going to bother with it. I was going to be like, all right, let's just, hey, you guys over there who looks like you're about to do some stupid shit, calm emotion. But if you guys, if everybody's kind of chill right now, then. Uh, well, uh, you think we should get out of town or do you think we should try to help out a little bit? I mean, we have been here for a few days and kind of, this city's been pretty good to us. Yeah. Do you think they'd? Uh, I think they'd pr they'd be pretty good about compensating us too, right? I like the way you think. He starts uh, immediately. He kind of like starts casting light in plate in like in inside of like rubble to kind of like illuminate for anybody like trying to get out. All right, everyone, follow my boys. Fly me to the moon. Let me dance among the stars. And I'm just trying to calm down, like, anybody who's, like, freaking out. Like, very much trying to distract anybody from, like, the horrific thing going on. Just okay. being like, hey, it's all right. It's all right. Everything cool. Be cool. Right, right. Um, Karia, you're trying because, like, the elf who was behind the... um. The, the stall, the, his, his wares. Uh, he booked it as soon as that earthquake started. Um, and Porkchop is, like, trying to eat all of his uh, his fruit that he still has on the... that's <laughs> fallen on the ground, basically, because of the earthquake. <laughs> it touched the ground. Porkchop, that's enough. <laughs> Come on. 
You be in and out. As you're trying to um get pork chop more or less away from the fruit on the ground, um you start overhearing a couple of guards that are kind of like trying to move some of the rubble out um of the street. You think that monk got someone to look into the missing script? I don't know. You think that might be the cause of the earthquakes? Could be. I don't know. Karia's gonna turn pork chop towards them and go over there. What's this about a missing script? Oh, well, um... The head monk, uh, Orkum, he came in the other days. He was saying that the, um, the ancient, um, draconian script was stolen from the monastery. Ever since he came into town, the earthquakes have started. And they've been getting more violent by the day. Where can I find this monk? You should be able to find him up in the mountains, up at the monastery. Right. Those mountains? <laughs> <laughs> I know Orkum was uh, going to pay whoever ever could um, help find this script. Okay, how do you spell his name? Uh, Orkum is O-R-C-A-M. Alright. Well, can't be having all these earthquakes and whatnot I might go find and speak with this monk oh, very well I, I wish you luck and the guards continue just clearing out the rubble can kind of continuing to talk amongst themselves Does she see um, Valen on the ground at all? <laughs> yeah, you. Let up stand on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. You see this this tiefling just laying prone on the ground, <laughs> rubbing his nose. Curry is gonna get off pork chop and go over to him. You okay there? He he pulls the glaive off of his back and kind of uses that to bruise. <laughs> Climb himself up. Just, yes, I'm fine. Just uh, busted my nose. Gavin just he like, he bleeding like, in laughter in the distance. Who's yeah, the he's, snoot? He's trying to look around. What? What was that? What was I don't know. Um, some guards I was talking to said it might have something to do with this missing script. So I'm missing, going to head into script. Yeah, some ancient draconian script. Do you think dragons are responsible? Who knows, but I'm going to head into I the mountains. They just sat in mountains and sat on gold. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought. But uh I'm going to head into the mountains and go find this monk named um Orcum and see what's going on. I see. Uh, if it'll help the people around here, would you like any assistance? <clears throat> oh, of course. Yeah. Um, let me just... Uh, some nine hells. What is Gavin? And he lets out a shrill whistle. Um, and from around a corner, you probably hear a post break as Gavin breaks, <laughs> his, breaks the rope. <laughs> yep. Karya, you feel this slight rumbling as this six-legged warhorse-sized goat come to a halt right next to Valen. Well, that's Valen, quite a Valen, scene. Valen just reaches up and scratches him behind the ears. This is Gavin. Uh, he is, he's my friend. Ah, and this here's Porkchop. He's my buddy. Porkchop just starts sniffing at Gavin, to which Gavin kind of just, like, his ears kind of go back a bit, and he kind of, like, puffs out his chest a bit, and just staring down at Porkchop. <laughs> we have a giant boar and a giant goat. A six-legged goat. I want everybody to be well aware of what is currently ridden by our two mounted combatants. I, I love how, like, 
two pairs of characters just like fit so well together like this is like be- you like like the odd couple and the odd like the odd couple and the not so odd couple i don't understand <laughs> i gotta pit i gotta board i gotta go six and like if a you joke. give me a moment in the discord i will post a picture of what Gavin actually looks like he he is quite large <laughs> Yeah, they have the garden. Hmm. Oh lord. Yep. <laughs> okay. He is at least two tons of raw fury <laughs> and hunger. <laughs> uh so yep, Gavin is just like staring down at pork chop, holding his ground. <laughs> And Valen, Porkchop like, is just the, like, Val- sticking his Valen nose in Gavin's fur. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, Valen is like touching Gavin. Just, Gavin, just don't eat him. That's all I ask. <laughs> Please don't eat him. You feel as Gavin just stomps one of his feet on the ground in oh, protest. No, 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 uh, Valen's going to look at Katia. Um, as curious as Porkchop is, I may advise against touching him touching Gavin. Gavin doesn't like um right, I, animals. I gotcha. Come on, pork chop, stop being nosy. <laughs> Roll, <She's me>. pushing... <laughs> Roll me an animal handling, Karia. Seventeen. Yeah, so you like grab pork chop snout and like throw like push him away, like move. <laughs> And uh, Porkchop kind of just, like, shakes off a bit. Um, Baritone, you were able to uh, kind of listen in on bits and pieces of what Caria was telling Valen in regards to this monk and this missing draconian script. Guys, battle round. You, uh, uh, all right. You guys go ahead and clear out. Make sure you listen to these wonderful guards here doing their job so eloquently. Thank you, men and women who are serving this fine city. You guys have yourself a wonderful time. Kira, I think we uh, have some people that might need our assistance. And he kind of, he makes like a little flower and just kind of like sends it up in the air with the presentation and just... (sighs) And like a little kind of like firework thing is like a send off, like a into like this red little plume of smoke. Uh, you kind of hear a couple of like the the village kids see this and like whoa, like point in, think it's really really cool. Ball is I'm gonna stay staring with, at it with enough excitedly. with enough. I'm gonna listen to your parents. Maybe one day you too will be able to cast, be able to entertain like I can. All right, champs. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then he Even walk, he's walking looking over. at the fireworks just like ooh. <laughs> he looks at Kira's like I mean that's not how I did it but you know maybe that <laughs> <laughs> alright do as I say not as I do <laughs> he starts walk kind of offers a hand to Kira as we I think these guys these guys might need some help they are an odd pair, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, the giant goat's kind of giving me a stare, but at the same time, that wouldn't be a bad, bad little attraction, you know? I mean, not wrong. Yeah, Baritone, you see as, like, Gavin hears you and Cairo walking over, and his head immediately, like, looks straight at you, and his ears are forward. His chest puffed out a little, and he's, yeah, he's giving you the eye. He's giving you the eye. <laughs> um... I make a, a you once again use non press digitation uh, and make a little. I make like a little bird appear in my hand, or no, it's a non magical trinket. Um, I'm trying to think what the hell could attract a goat. Oh, a can. I make just like a can, like a metal thing. I don't know. I'm trying to think of goat. <laughs> like a little can is in front of me, and I'm just like, eh? and I just kind of like toss it up a little bit, like in my head, like juggling it, and then I just like toss it. Off to the side and see if he follows it. Mm-mm. 
You know, with some of the other goats, that trick normally does the normally does the. I think well, at this point, trick. Balin would turn around and see that you're. <laughs> You're uh, you may so, sorry about Gavin. Um, if someone tries to approach either of us from behind, he takes a defensive position. Gavin, sit. Well, that's if that's his defensive position. I uh, shudder to think what's his offense. <laughs> and it's usually when I'm riding him. I've heard of an odd thing like a small woman riding a boar. <laughs> Baritone, you see as Porkchop sees you and walks over and starts oh. sniffing at your freaking suit again. <laughs> He's glancing up Kyria again. <laughs> Porkchop, what have I told you about that? Stop being nosy. <laughs> he's he's just he hasn't batted the thing away, but he's now just staring up at uh, <laughs> the woman that he does not know the name of, but is Karia. Yeah. <laughs> Like he's he's got like the cigar lit and he's just like waiting. Curry is gonna yeah. Curry's gonna smack him on the nose, smack him on the snout. Poor John <laughs> He gets booped on the snoot. He backs off a bit, like shaking off. And Boop then the he snoot. looks at Karia ears forward. <laughs> what have I told you about that? <laughs> And like Porkchop's just a... giving you, like, the puppy dog eyes at this point. Gavin is definitely rolling his eyes because he's fully aware of what's going on. <laughs> Anyhow, so... What's going on here? Um, well, uh, my new friend here, uh, what's your name? My name is Karia. I was talking about how some of the guards were talking about this draconic script that went missing. And once it started missing, the earthquake started happening. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so we were gonna go take uh, a trip into the mountains to find this monk named Orcam who's supposedly paying anyone who's willing to help find this script. As soon as she says paying them... Kyra's eyes kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> Baritone's being a little more, being a little more hesitant, like dragon script, like, ah, oh, shit. That's a, that sounds like a lot. Like, what's the price tag on this thing? But he doesn't say anything. He's, he's poker faced his shit, just like, mm -hmm. yeah. like uh, just listening. Uh, yes. So our plan, our plan was uh, to, well, make sure everyone around here is okay. And then we were going to go and talk to this priest or monk and see. If there's anything we can do to help. I say that sounds like a plan, don't you, Kira? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds I'm sorry. I'm sorry, is it Kyra or Kira? Um I've been saying Kyra, but Kyra. I okay, sorry, no, I don't want to because we have Karia and Kyra, so that's why I'm like, all right, we gotta get this I gotta get this straight in my brain. Yeah. So <laughs> Kira might be easier to separate. Honestly, I think it was going back and forth between both of them in the last campaign she was in. And like I could never remember which one I settled on. So it just really doesn't matter. All right. So what are we settling on right now? We'll go with Kira. Kira. Got it. Kira and Kira. Duh. Well, my name is uh, Baritone. Pleasure. My name is my name is Valen. Valen? V A L I N. Valen. Valen. Val. I, I apologize. It. No, it's understandable. I know with my my accent it could be a little tricky to. I have a question. How well trained is your um steed? Gavin's uh, chest just noble. pops up. <laughs> Volin immediately, like, hand on side, like, sit. <laughs> Puts his butt, in his butt on the ground. He is well trained, although his ego needs work. I was gonna say, you know, if you ever, uh, you ever get him to do a couple tricks, it wouldn't be bad to scrape up a couple silver, possibly, depending on the city. And Gavin immediately gets up. 
Gavin. <laughs> He's just pawing the is ground he... now. <laughs> Does he understand Gavin. exactly? Does he understand everything I'm saying? Uh, yes, actually. Hey, uh, Gavin. He, he's significantly smarter than he looks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, Gavin, would I'm going to ask you would politely. Gavin understand that comment? Because I feel like he would, like, look at... No, the joke is Gavin understands common. He just can't speak it. Mm, it's I like, feel... I'm, Baritone's going to look at Gavin. Gavin, I'm going to ask you to calm down. His eyes just narrow. I'm looking at you. Valen is starting to just step in between them like, oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Gavin, if you behave, I will give you extra apples later. And he immediately backs off. <laughs> well, I was just going to put him to sleep. That wouldn't have ended well. <laughs> well, humanely. I don't mean I would. I don't, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't mean in the uh, threatening way. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is if it had somehow failed, it would not have ended well. Uh, uh, happened once or twice. Corvi, what would uh how how much knowledge of where Valen and Gavin came from? How 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 knowledgeable or how well known are Probably his not what very well known for where, the area that you guys are in currently. <sighs> Well, uh, regardless, let's go speak to your monk friend, or you're the monk. See how much exactly this dragon script is worth. Uh, sure. Uh, Valen is, like, kind of offers to, uh, Karia and Baritone. Uh, if you want to add Gavin, he could hold two relatively easily. I think I'll, uh, take a walk, but, uh, Kira, by all means. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I'll walk myself as well. Well, and Nas just like a real quick, like leaps up, <laughs> gets in the saddle. And Corey is going to get on pork chop. Well, then, uh, and then we walk off. All right. I'm... Uses a little heated. Uh, Baritone's going to use a little press dissertation to kind of clean some of the dirt and bore off of his pants. <laughs> That's visual. I need to clean bore off my pants. Well, a little bore, like <clears throat> snot. Snot snap, or snout snot. <laughs> As we get like towards more like forest and towards the mountain ranges, uh, Kira's going to kind of whisper under her breath and you'll see like her clothes just like change into more of like a bright like green like between bright and dark greens <clears throat> and like a comfortable like walking outfit you know we do kind of i do kind of stick we do both kind of would stick out like sore thumbs like that wouldn't we and his armor kind of changes to like just some subtle uh, dark browns and just kind of looks like some studded leather armor. Okay. Love this. <laughs> Vaughn continues charting off blissfully unaware of what's going on. Um, hey, the beauty of glamour armor. I don't know I don't know what Kira's got, but I got glamour armor. I can just uh, changes when I wanted to. Shift weave. Ah, nice. Um, so you guys kind of leave the city kind of heading into the forest um there is kind of like a um worn down like dirt path that kind of strays off from the main road um which you would assume is where the monastery is um so you follow this this dirt path and it takes you probably about a couple hours traveling um up into the uh into this forest and eventually you do come across uh, this uh, monastery and um, the decals on this monastery scream draconic. Uh, it's very dragon-esque atmosphere. You see uh, statues of uh, dragons kind of like on the, the, the tips of the roofs um, and a dragon statue in front of the monastery kind of just 
looking down as you walk by it. Uh, well, I wonder what deities they worship here. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's pretty pretty obvious. But uh... clearly, they worship snakes. <laughs> you don't get out much either, there, bro. Uh, no, I really haven't been home. I haven't been anywhere since my time in the north. Yeah, snakes. We'll Sad go with that. Except snakes, snakes, but with wings and, you know. Not right and legs, because otherwise they're, because uh, it's not a dragon, what is it? it's dragon, dragon, but if it doesn't have legs, it's a wyvern, but if it has two legs, it's something. That, I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of the dragon, dragon lore that I've, if, I've forgotten more than I can retain. Of course, me out of character knows the answer to all of those, but following them. <laughs> I vaguely, I vaguely remember because there was a TikTok about it. And it was yeah. just like this is a weird. This yeah, is yeah, a weird. Yeah, yeah. No le- no legs worm, two legs wyvern, four legs dragon, four legs no wings dr- uh, drink. Yep. <laughs> no um, legs, no wings, serpent. <laughs> so, so you guys come up to the big staircase that kind of leads up into the uh monastery uh you do hear like subtle like hums coming from inside the monastery and a faint hint of incense in the air would i be able to identify what the smell is um with a passive investigation of 18 Gotta look up fucking incense scents now. God damn it! Lavender. I mean, you could just you could just fucking say lavender and vanilla or some <laughs> shit. Or oh sage. No, 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 no! It's a dragon temple. Cinnamon. Sure, <laughs> it's fucking cinnamon. <laughs> or there's frankincense, like... patchouli. It's cinnamon. Okay, it's dra- baritone. It's, it's it is cinnamon. <laughs> He's baritone's just like. You know, this almost sound, smells like that. Uh, Kira, what was that shot? It was like a. They mixed it. it was supposed to be like a fire moat. Had like a nice little sweetness to it. You know what I'm talking about? They had a bar that was like specialized in fire moat. Had like a little winged imp on the gl- on the bottle. I don't I remember. <laughs> just takes a sip from a flask and just like that's one of those minute details you guys, that don't if you guys catch the, stick if in you the guys brain catch... man. I didn't catch the I, reference. I'm ref- I'm referencing fireball. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm fully <laughs> aware of what's going on here. No, it was for no, that was <laughs> that was for Kira. That was like fireball, <laughs> fire moat, a winged imp. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the bottle of Fireball in a hot minute. All right, look, you're not white trash. I get it. All right, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I say I, I normally stick. All right, what are y'all doing? Uh, Bear Tom's just it's, it's kind of smelling and being like, hmm, takes me back. Uh, walk in. Yeah, Vaughn uh, is gonna get off Gavin and let him graze as he walks in as well. Kari is gonna do the same. Get off pork chop. Tell him to stay put and. <laughs> She's gonna go in. Oh, no. Gonna push on the door. Is the door open? Yeah. Um. You push against the door, and it's just a loud creaking as it opens up. Um. You do see uh, a few monks, kind of in the main area, kind of just you know meditating, um, chanting, um, incense. the The smell of cinnamon is very strong in this room. Um. There is a um. Yeah, God, statue, uh, like a golden S statue, uh, onto the left hand side of the room, kind of like a shrine almost. Um, Baritone, you would know this as Bahamut. Bahamut! Bless you. <laughs> Baritone just walks in, kind of like knocks on the door, like very much aware that the door was loud as shit anyway, but that still kind of <laughs> knocks on it. Hi, uh, we hear about a missing script. Looks um, like we're told that some people might need a little bit of a assistance trying to find it. And, well, I know just a 
ragtag group who might be able to help you out in that scenario. Takes a big drag from the cigar. Yep. Um, the monks who were kind of like, you know, cross leg on, on the floor uh, in front of you, they don't flinch. They don't move. Um, but you do see an older gentleman in kind of like monks uh, attire kind of walk up to you. You're here to look for the script. Uh, yeah. That is, uh... uh... We had heard about it, um, and heard you were looking for people, but that's about it at the moment. Could you tell us more? I can. And he kind of bows slightly. I am the head monk here. I am Orkham. Um... And he kind of like, mo like motions you to follow him, as he kind of walks down one of the hallways. What was his name? I'm sorry. Orkum. Orkum. O R C A M. Is the smell called? of cinnamon getting stronger? <laughs> hmm. Is the smell <laughs> of cinnamon getting stronger? Oh yeah! Like as soon as you stepped into that Fallen's main room. Fallen's eyes are watering so badly. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all wouldn't happen to have any fire moat here, would you? No. Hey, um, DM. Yeah. Hmm? Um, I'll be back real quick. I gotta take care of a dog. Uh, no problem. Um, so you guys follow Orkham, and he kind of brings you into, um, uh, one of the rooms of the temple. He opens the door, and you see claw marks along the walls. You see, um, items destroyed um there in f ahead of you there looks to be a mantle almost with deep gashes kind of into it um and kind of a pedestal of where you would assume the script was um Erito would like to pretend not to be phased by this <laughs> roll me a deception Volan check <laughs> I'll say Volan just looks around <clears throat> Almost if I had a really big cat in here. Uh, a 24 on the deception. Oh, yeah, you, Hira, you're pretty straight face. Here is going to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> he just walking in, just smoke, puffing on the cigar, like behind his eyes, it's like, no, <laughs> no. But his face is just like, what? Like, here got a 14 for deception. Kira, it's a little harder for you to keep a straight face. <laughs> Yeah, Valen's just looking around like the last time I've seen anything like this. We had let we had put a cat in the house and didn't give it away out. They must have a really big cat. Kira's just like passing knowing looks at Baritone like. <laughs> How old is Kira, by the way? 27. Perfect. He just kind of glances and is like, yeah, don't worry, kid. We'll keep keep it together, doll. Keep it together. Um, Depending on the price, we might be bouncing out of here real quick, fast, in a hurry. Just, you know, fly me to the moon. Balin right. just seems utterly unfazed. Um, <laughs> he has not put two and two together yet. Orkum um, kind of walks up to where the, the mantle is, and he kind of turns around towards all of you. This was where the script of scales was kept. An ancient script of ancient draconian text. Unfortunately, it was stolen the other night. Uh, I, I hate to cut you off there, Monk, but uh, this really looks more like taken rather than stolen. What's the difference? Well, stolen would mean that was a person. Taken is, um, well, whatever the hell made this. A really big cat. Baritone just looks over. Can you do an insight check, like on whether or not the dude is like for real? Like, yeah, roll, roll an insight check. Shockingly enough, insight not one of my like super high, uh, super high things. Uh, Fifteen. Yeah, from what you, he he's, he's being genuine. He is genuinely, he's, yeah. The only time he's seen like a room scratched up like this was because of a cat. Therefore, it must be just a bigger cat. <laughs> You know, Valen, was it? Yes. 
probably some a little bigger than a cat. How big are the cats around here? A little more fiery. Did you Scaly. remember the dragons? Remember the dragons we walked in? The dragons? Oh. <laughs> You stick <laughs> stick stick with old stick with old baritone. We'll get you there eventually. And the worst part is the reason why he Bong looks over at Kira like this fucking guy. We're gonna make like we can like man, we can get some use out of this fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, like we can use some is, muscle for the performance. Like he's what like make, what, what makes what makes this better is that where Volin is from, if Gavin is not the hint of how big some of the animals are there. He wasn't that far off and it, 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 assuming it could have been a cat because saber tooth tigers are in his area. <laughs> yeah, but I would not call a tiger a cat, but at the same time, kits, cats, sex, and nipples. Sex, what's that? Kits, cats, sex, and wives. I'm going to go ahead and say knives. Never heard that old riddle. Fallon just stares at you blankly. It's an old proverb. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, Orkham kind of Riddle. looks to all of you. Oh, I know this looks bad. But we really do need that script back. And I'm willing to pay you all handsomely for its return. Can you tell me what that script could do in the wrong hands? Say the hands that took them, took it? Unfortunately, I cannot. I mean, Can't you kind of lead us to walk in blind. Are on the... this. There, there was an earthquake while we were in town earlier. Are the scripts related? It might be possible. It would be safe to assume. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't quite get a response on mine. Uh, you can't or you won't tell us? I can't. Scared to read the book when you had it? It is not for my eyes to read. So, looks over Kira. Imagine having a book that you couldn't read or that you weren't allowed to read. Who is allowed to read it? Bahamut. <clears throat> Valen takes like one step back and leans to Baritone. Who's Bahamut? <laughs> uh, he's a real scary dragon type. I don't know why the hell they had a book that only he could read and they just left it out in the open, but because Bahamut would I know whether Bahamut was like good, bad, or otherwise? Um, Bahamut is a lawful good deity. <laughs> okay. I was gonna say he right. is a god. <laughs> oh, I was thinking Bahamut was the dragon. My bad. No, that's Tiamat. Yeah. Tiamat, no, that's Bahamut what I was thinking. is also a dragon god. Well, yeah. He's just he is a, a dragon, dragon god, god. but Okay, but I was like, okay, he's kind of a big he's a dragon, supposed to be good, kind of like a dragon god kind of thing. So you mean kind of like Yermengander? Uh, a Yerman what now? I'm just gonna. <laughs> um, that's a 15 on the history check there. Do I even know what the fuck that no, is? No, you don't. I'm going to pretend that I understood what you said there and say yes. Yep, 15. Like, Fallen kind of looks well. away like, he's so wise. <laughs> like, Kira stands with the, the comment, Yerman what now? <laughs> Yerman Gander. Bear yeah, tells going to look at the... Kira just like, just like it, it's, it's the great oh, worm that's yeah, in the world. Yerman Gander. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're you're gander. Yeah, you're gander. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'll just look at um, now. So the Barra, so uh, Bahamut, so this was only supposed to be read by Bahamut. Could he have sent someone to read it? 
Not that we were aware. Does Bahama talk to y'all very regularly? Pretty frequently, actually. Huh. Oh. So how never much? To, never wanted to put much faith in the gods myself. Has it been a while since he's spoken with you? Has there been some sort of like absence? Might make you could, suspicious of something. Could he, could he not just send a bunch of his uh, good dragons, as they like to call themselves, after whoever took this thing? Or Bahamut's coming at this pretty much like an atheist going at like a church, mm-hmm. essentially just being like, mm-hmm. like, yeah, why didn't your god just stop them? <laughs> I'm sure Bahamut is busy with other matters. He is a god, after all. Oh, you hear that, Kira? Gods can be busy. You know where it might have been taken to? I don't know. Although Anybody I get a smoke coming from the mountains look? isn't a great sign. Well, <laughs> the monk looks at you. Smoke. Uh, yes, there is a smoke coming from the mountain range. Oh dear. The volcano's woken up. Is that something the scroll could have done? It might have. I Again, I cannot say. How long has the scroll been gone for? A couple days now. Enough time to reach ah! the top of the mountain. Mm-hmm. Couple days. So you gonna tell me you have an ancient scroll of dragons that's been missing for a couple days? Uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, what would happen if someone other than Bahamut were to read it? Well, from old scriptures, it is said that if anyone were to read it, then a great firestorm would fall upon the valley. Well, it just and... kind of turns to the group. <laughs> Firestorm doesn't sound good. And I forgot my sunscreen. <laughs> but that's what he's doing to such an evil. I'm riding that. He's he's playing. He is cool as a cucumber right now. Meanwhile, behind his eyes, like raining fire. <laughs> You've had everything <laughs> for days. <laughs> what the. Just don't panic, don't so panic, don't panic. you I'm see the gray add. slowly growing. The gray on the sides is slowly. Yeah, I guess I should have described what Baritone looked like at the start of this. But yeah, like he has like that, like very much like uh Raza Rachel Ghoul from like Batman the animated series, like just gray on the side. It's just slowly growing further and further the more this conversation gets. <laughs> if the the volcano has awoken and the scripture talks about a firestorm. Would it be safe to assume that the scripts were, scripture was taken there? Probably a safe bet, yes. What is, is there anything up there besides a volcano? Your typical mountain creatures, as far as I'm aware. Trolls, goblins. I'm sure there are clans of orcs that live up there as well. Big fan of the odds. Like, no, the if we're gonna stop odds. this firestorm, we need to get to that volcano. First, a question. There was mention of reward, and I'm just curious. With all of this um, danger, what that would be that would be worth it? You see, Orkham. Um, kind of just hold up a finger and he leaves the room for a second and then it takes him about a few minutes but um he then comes back out with um this big pouch and he kind of um sets it down on the ground and he opens it and there is just a stupid amount of gold in this bag and he kind of looks up at all of you. I would be willing to pay you all 500 gold each. 
or it's safe return. I mean, Valen was already on board. It's it's up to the rest of the party now. <laughs> Aria was already planning to go along with it as well, regardless of the money. <laughs> um, <laughs> all an adventure. Adventure must be had. <laughs> um, let me see. Do I have anything? Shit! I thought I had message or something. God damn it! No, I don't. Kira's gonna look down at the bag and kind of look back up at him like is this is Bahamut we're talking about and this is an awful like volcanoes it's an awful lot of danger 500 gold is a pretty decent price tag but I think we can do better I risking my skin is not something I do lightly Hey, if you want, you can have my half of the gold as long as I get to kill something. I don't care. I just want to see the volcano. Kira just kind of looks at Kari and just like... <laughs> <clears throat> Cast silence on Kari. So, yeah. <laughs> Kira's Shut trying up. to <laughs> per persuade uh, this monk part with a little bit more for their troubles. Yeah, we bumped that up to 500 platinum. I thought that's what it was going to be, a big bag of platinum. I was about to be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh lord! <laughs> Never have to work in another dive bar unless I want to! <laughs> I could work in my own dive bar. Oh my god! You could own the dive bar and not even have to work. That's what I mean. Like my own, like no more. You could like, have a chain will... of dive bars. <laughs> the Rat Pack will be back. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Valen has no interest in asking for more, so. <laughs> Baritone is backing up his girl. Roll me a persuasion, Kira. Uh, would I? <laughs> There's no way for me to help her on this. No. Be a 16. The monk nods and he kind of gets up and leaves the room. He then returns with this ruby that has been cut in the shape of a dragon head. And he hands you it. I'm going to examine it. It is a genuine ruby, and you would know that this this a ruby of this size probably about 10,000 gold pieces which means each of us will get a lot more than 500 platinum each so that means that baritone actually no right, right about that Kira are getting five more than five <laughs> <laughs> this is this shit's getting mounted on the fucking bar like yeah, that's... this is mounted above the bar kind of shit. I mean, that's, like... that's if you just split that amongst you two, that'd be another five thousand gold, aka five hundred platinum to each of you. Oh, I'm on top of the oh, five hundred gold. Oh, I, oh, I'm aware. Baritone, <laughs> baritone. What's am I riding out the deception check? Or do I need to make another one? Yeah, baritone. Uh, is that half roll me, <laughs> roll me. Yeah. Another deception. Mm -hmm. To keep my cool. Yep. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, that's a twenty-six. Never mind. Yeah, you're he still, is you're, somehow yep. even calmer with money. Money uh, on the table. He's like, keep it, uh, keep it, like, <laughs> keep it there. <laughs> yeah, Kira's gonna try to make a deception <laughs> check as well for that. Oh, nice. That's a twenty-six. Yeah, you're able to keep your cool. 
We so, are both. Yeah, we both. Um, this is a. This is. We know this. We've done this. We've done this pick and roll before. I'm holding this and like trying not to shake with it. Like baritone kind of extends his hand. Like, let me. No, let me take a look. Oh. <laughs> Hold it. It's just like this is. I could. I could buy it. Inside, we're like, this is the biggest. I could buy it, not just a bar. Ruby. I could. Yeah, it's like I could buy. A, dive a whole castle. square with this like <laughs> we could make castle. i could get a we could create hall. our own city like i could have a concert hall with this big fucking thing like complete with bar like we, we would like we wouldn't have to just perform on dive bars we could hire other acts we could really turn this around he's just kind of looking at kira and he just kind of takes a big draw he's like <sighs> Irresponsible. <laughs> I think which uh, you would know, which you would know is like, I'm willing to risk it. <laughs> uh, he ha- he hands it back. Going, he hands it back to Kira. That'll, like, uh, that'll do. Very well. That'll do. That'll do, monk. That'll do. <clears throat> um. I'm assuming you're gonna give it back to the monk. <laughs> oh, I give it back to Gara. Gara can. I imagine it's going to do that. That's that is not something I want to yeah. just carry. <laughs> yeah, we we'll just be like this the whole time. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll hand it back and I'll kind of precious. caress the, uh, the the cheek of the ruby dragon and be like, "I'll be back for you." Uh, so uh, Orkum just nods as he holds the the ruby dragon well if those are the terms we agreed to then i wish you all the best of luck all right and then uh kira will walk out and start to look for clues um, so roll me perception. Baritone, are you looking to or no? And uh yeah, I would have I would have followed her out and been very much like Holy okay. shit, I can't believe that actually fucking worked. So <laughs> Baritone with your passive perception, um, you notice that the claw marks, because there were windows, like open windows in the room, and the claw marks are more or less coming in and out of these these windows. Mm-hmm. You uh, you got a way to head up there? How far up is that the window? Oh you know no! So the there's the floor, and then the wall only comes up maybe about five feet, and those where that's where the windows are. It, they're oh, they're I was right expecting there. them to be like up. No, okay. no, 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 no. Oh, I was gonna do a cool thing, but if they're not up that high, then I'll not do the cool thing. I mean, five foot for the windows is still like. Like that's still right here on Kira. Yeah, like it's still it's still like eye level, and it's just Baritone's gonna be like, okay. But as you look out the uh, the window, Baritone, you see um, footprints along uh, in the dirt below, and it kind of leads off into the mountains. Are they just are they? Would I be able to roll like an investigation or something to see whether or not it was walking or if it was like taking off into a run to like fly? Um, roll me a like just based on the gait of it, like how far spread out the steps are. Roll me a nature check. Nature, sure. I have stuff in that jack of all trades. Gotta love it. Uh, that is a 14. Um, so you're studying the footprints and based off of how the prints look, it was running. It wasn't yeah, trying it was. to fly or anything. It was just sprinting off. Well, whatever it was, it was trying to leave here quick, fast, and in a hurry. What shape are the prints in, like, humanoid? Yeah, like, how, how, well, I imagine they're dragon-like. 
how far like how big are these prints like oh they're probably bigger than your footprint i imagine that but it was more of like are we getting like a couple feet by a couple feet like just trying to use it to like ballpark the size of this fucking thing um based off of the spacing between the the footprints you would probably guess uh this creature was probably longer than seven feet Baritos is kind of he once he kind of like determines like okay it's out the window he kind of walks outside and takes a little peek and looks and so okay kind of kneels down by one of the prints kind of picks up a little bit of the dirt and just kind of like rubs it between some fingers and kind of drops it Takes one last drag of the cigar and then flicks it off to the side. Well, it's a, it's a big one. Tell you the guys that much. And it was moving. Valen's kind of looking at the tracks as well. Kira would have been wandering around in like completely the wrong part. Wait, where did they go? And then finally found him. Like, oh, there you are. Oh, look what you found. <laughs> So we might be able to he's have, gonna he's uh, gonna look over at uh one of our steeds be able to sniff out the tracks as well he's gonna glance over at valen you know what they say about a perfectly balanced broad empty head what? and a full sweater that is a direct frank sinatra point. I'm uh, about that. that is a direct frank yeah, sinatra say, point. she's gonna she's gonna, gonna give valen is still just staring blankly just she's gonna give baritone a side eye and like smack him <laughs> Of course, I wasn't talking about you, doll. Where would I be without you? <laughs> he, get, he just gives a little wink. Little... <laughs> Giving him the uh, death glare. <laughs> he knows damn good well if it came down to it, she would murder the shit out of him. But at the same time, he's like, come on. He's essentially been like a father figure, like adoptive father. Like, come on. Of course, I ain't talking about you, doll. <laughs> uh, Valen is going to call Gavin over to sniff the prints. Not necessarily to track them, but if we ever get up by the mountains and he smells it again. Okay. Um, you let let out this really shriekful whistle, um, and yeah, just you, the wolf whistle. You Ooh. hear the rumbling as Gavin Gavin runs over to you, Valen. Well, I'm not looking at give a little warning before the whistle. Uh, Sorry. Real loud. It's well it's it's his it's his warning call. I get that. Garvin is well obviously coming pretty quick fast in a hurry when he hears it, but that was loud as hell. Sorry. <laughs> uh Garvin, do you think you can get the scent? And Garvin kinda like starts sniffing at the ground near where the uh footprints are at. Um, takes a couple good whiffs and then kind of like just lifts up his head and just nods. All right, so if he, if he smells it again, he'll let us know. Not good to know. Uh, Karia. Sorry, darling, you're too far away. I couldn't hear you. Yeah? You, uh... <laughs> Your uh, pork shop, was it? Yep. Is he able to do some stuff like that, or is he more the um, knock, knock, who's there, it's me sort of boar? <laughs> <laughs> He's more of a fighting boar than a sniffing out boar. The only so thing a knock, this... knock, who's there, it's me then. Got it. Yeah. The only thing he's good for sniffing out Hello, is food. Hello, motherfucker. <laughs> Surprise. G Gavin doesn't knock. <laughs> He'll just break the door down. <laughs> right, right. Well, uh, I guess we should follow the tracks and see what we can find then. Baritone, you notice pork chop isn't there. Hey, uh, Kari, do you have your own little, uh, to find this thing? Darn it, where did he go now? And she's just bad? gonna shout pork chop I, really loudly. Kind of leans is it over bad and that, that, that I just wanted you to go like, shoo, like just... 
Howard For pork chop, Balin is going to oh, check oh, Gavin's hooves. Just that. Did did you kick pork chop? <laughs> Balin, as you're checking Gavin's hooves, I need you to make a uh, deck save for oh, me. No. Uh, yeah, you, I guess. you you should know better than that. You should know better than this. Oh, well, I'm getting kicked. <laughs> What is up with people not knowing how, like, why are people's animals being assholes well, to them? I'm like, yeah, I mean, in fairness, it's Valen, like, petting his head and kind of leaning over a look at his hooves. Oh, I thought you were, like, full-on grabbing his hoof and just like, are, did you fuck? Oh, no, 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 I don't even do that to normal goats. Okay, fair. All right. Never mind, then. I, I, I envisioned that differently. <laughs> Yeah, I know. What he, did you do? He, he did not grab to look at it. He's just looking at them to see if he notices. Actually, no. What did you get for your deck save? I got a seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Valen, as you're like, you, you have Gavin's head, right? And you're looking. Uh, yeah, just Gavin... kind of petting his head like. <laughs> Gavin, like. <laughs> Puts his snout between, like, your legs and throws you. <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh. um. And he, then he just looks at you like, how dare you think I would kick that boar? <laughs> Vaughn looks right at Gavin and just... You almost did about 30 minutes ago. Don't test me. And he just snorts and just paws the ground at you. You want to fucking go? <laughs> oh, Jesus. I think the goat would win. Um, Baritone just kind of looks at the two of them and kind of looks back at uh, Kira, like... And you just you just see Kira, like... It's like, don't have animals in show business. Please tell me Kevin didn't hear that. <laughs> nah, he's too focused on you. I didn't insult him. The, 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 this would not be the first time that Valen has had to wrestle Gavin to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> There's a trick to it. <laughs> I mean, Baritone's not that big a fighter, but I've got enough spells. I got some spells that are like fucking like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Valen just uses brute force. <laughs> so, yeah, Kara, you are calling for Porkchop, calling, calling, calling. He's not showing up. And. Kari is getting a bit worried because normally he does come when she calls. She's going to see if she sees his hoof prints on the ground. Um, so I'm assuming you, you'll go back to where you kind of left him, correct? Yeah. Um, yep, you notice uh, there are some hoof prints that kind of like wander into the woods. She's going to follow him. Um... So you're following these tracks. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? We are, I'm like the rest of us are watching this shit show unfold with him <laughs> and his goddamn goat. Or at least that's yeah, no, what Baritone. Fallen is absolutely still staring down Gavin and just is like, if you didn't do it, where did the pork chop go? And he kind of like just... looks towards the forest. I was gonna say, Baritone's got a sleep spell just like cooking in his hand. He's just like, mm -mm, I ain't fucking with this thing. I'm gonna try to put it to sleep, but if that don't work, I yeah, got some since, other shit. Since I can do. Gavin actually gave him an answer, Valen kind of reaches into his pack, pulls out pulls out like a dried apple, and tosses it to him. Snatches it. Looks over here, dried apple. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Might need to press a digitation some of that shit away. Uh, I should. <laughs> Volan, like, so, it, 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 did Volan hear that? Uh, I would have whispered that, That's but right. I mean, you can, we can go deception versus perception. Yeah. Well, no, let me just, I mean, he's focused on Gavin at the moment, so we do a disadvantage for him. Yeah, he definitely didn't hear it because he might be able to yeah. offer advice in that regard. <laughs> Seven, yeah, I was gonna say that was a 19, so yeah, no, I love how I could roll an 11. I, I love how I could roll an 11 instead. <laughs> Like, 
God, this this oh, I love it. I love skill checks. As soon as we get to combat, I'm fucked. But until then, <laughs> well, see that that's but, that's Valen. When it comes to skill checks, he's fucked. When it comes to combat, he's kind of a terror. That's that's every other character I make. Every other character, bad skills, great combat. This time I played it the other way. No, it's okay. I'm a, I'm a I'm a polar. All right. So what are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, we're just this. <laughs> All right, Karia, you are following um, Pork Chop's footprints, and suddenly you hear this shrieking. Like Pork Chop is in distress. She's gonna run towards it. You see, as this fucking pig is stuck. He, there was, there looks to be a fallen tree and a hole in the tree, and he stuck his head in it, and now his head is stuck. Did you go straight Lion King? Like, is Nala about to come up? The- <laughs> God, t- I think that's Gavin. <laughs> Can you feel the love tonight? I love how I started singing and it said playing music. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah you you see as like pork chop is struggling to try to get his head out of this tree and car is gonna be like gosh darn it pork chop and she's gonna go over and try to help him out okay um roll me a athletics okay Twenty-two. Yep. So you are uh, kind of like examining the the hole that pork chop is stuck in. Um, you notice a couple of weak points within the bark, and you kind of just take it and you break the bark and free pork chop from his his tree prison. <laughs> and she's gonna get on his back. She's gonna like give him a good whacking on the head and she's <laughs> going to say pork chop let's go right now and pork chop just kind of just snorts and kind of makes his way back um eventually y'all hear kind of like this uh the sounds of like bushes moving and twigs snapping and you see this just this giant boar uh covered in like bark debris on his head and uh, dirt on his snout. <laughs> he kind of just strolls on over and snorting. His tail's kind of just flicking back and forth. All right, we're ready to go. <laughs> Everything all right? Kind of looks like he got into something. Yeah, he got his head stuck in a tree. He kind of just licks, licks his snout. <laughs> Bit mlam. Right. Okay. Gavin right, kind of just up. rolls his eyes. And on the sooner we get done with this, the sooner we get that giant fucking ruby. Va- Valen looks at Gavin like, did you watch him do it? <laughs> <laughs> Matt. That's what I thought. <laughs> So I'm assuming you guys are following the tracks. Going on yep. adventure. Mm-hmm. All right. I kind of let the the two with the animals kind of lead the way. Walk. Colin is definitely leading somewhat the way. towards the back with baritone. All right. So you guys um kind of start following these tracks into the woods, um, and you guys walk for probably a good almost four hours. You're making your way up this this mountain as the forest turns from you know foresty green to a mountainous gray as the terrain turns from forest to mountains um and you're making your way up this mountain and eventually these tracks come to the entrance of a cave And obviously, as you guys got closer, um, the smoke that you saw earlier in town is getting closer. The location of where that smoke is. It's... Hmm. 
Uh, kind of like hop off Galvin. But, uh, how, yeah. how big is this cave? Like, is it a pretty massive cave opening? Is it like single file? Um, you can easily like the four of you could probably get in there. The animals probably could not. So the animals it's probably would have like to stay fifteen, insane. like fifteen foot wide. Yeah. So the animals will have to stay. Yep, they have to stay outside. Valen kind of looks at the cave, then back at Gavin. Mm -hmm. Cave, Gavin trying to formulate how he can fit Gavin in there. Gavin just puts his ears back and then kind of just with his snout shoves Valen forward. Yeah. Can you at least make sure the pork chop doesn't get in any more trouble? Meh. I'll take that. <laughs> Curry is gonna get off pork chop and she's gonna grab him by the snout and give him a <laughs> stern talking to. <laughs> Now, I swear, if you wander off again, I'll give you such a knocking on the head. <laughs> he just sees Porkchop's ears are just forward, and he's just looking at you as you grab him by the freaking tusks, like, listen! <laughs> Stop your shit! <laughs> Stop your shenanigans, or I'll turn you into bacon. I, like how I will let so Hawks do like... all the things he threatens. <laughs> all the things. Hawks will make you into so many pairs of pants. <laughs> <laughs> I will turn you into bacon, I swear to God. <laughs> it will be bacon and trousers for a kobold, I promise. I promise. Yeah, but no, um, I like how Valen just has no govin, like, just, just stay out of trouble. <laughs> everyone make a deck save. Great. Oh, my favorite. So oh, so well for those. This die. Uh, you guys uh -huh. are around me, so you get a plus three to your deck save. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, that'd be 12. That'll be an 18. 16. Also a 16. Anyone who got a 15 or higher, you hear as another earthquake goes off. <laughs> the ground shakes under you all. Um... And whoever got under a 15 will be prone again. Um, there are rocks now coming from the mountain. And they are falling. <laughs> um, so Kira's on. Baritone is very quickly going to scoop up Kira and just move his way in. Like, yeah, oh, we got to work Colin on your Colin's going to grab Karya and pull them into the uh, cave as well. So you mean to tell me you can walk on nine inch heels, but you can't manage to fucking stay on your feet during an earthquake? <laughs> yeah. Listen, yeah. Valen's not worried about Gavin. They're on a mountain, and he is a mountain goat. <laughs> Shaking earth is not my forte, apparently. Clearly. Nine inch heels don't move whenever I'm standing still. Baritone, you notice a faint yeah. orange glow deeper in the cave. At this point, Valen is definitely going to draw his glaive. Um, Baritone, once we're like in the cave and like free of like where the rocks are, he's going to set uh, Kira down. Um, Thanks, son. Not a problem. Now then, let's see here. Uh, he pulls out his dagger. And he's kind of holding it by the blade, and he just kind of taps the handle, and it kind of glows with a <laughs> faint, with a red light. That's kind of like a flashlight for him. Mm -hmm. Let's see, what do we have ahead of us? Anybody else see the glow? Um, uh, as like... soon as Baritone points out the the light, you all can see the light. Uh, yeah, we you hate that my pers my passive perception is that high, don't you? She's like, maybe, but also now I can just tell you things instead of you being like, you see the thing, see the thing I want you to see. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, Valen's passive is 10. <laughs> he has a plus zero oh, to Paladin, wisdom. Paladin, sorry. Th I was thinking cleric for a second. I'm like, how? <laughs> <laughs> I am gifted. <laughs> I'm the best. 
I'm ten. So, yeah, I, I do I'm ten. Damn it. I would I would Fucking give guys. much more of a damn about my spells if I was a cleric. Look, we gotta look. We get we get queen with her things. We get you with your things. I get got with mine. You know. Yeah. That's what happens when you play D and D for with people too long. <laughs> Lance, you didn't know All that, right, so that y'all... comment had me snorting soda out of my nose. <laughs> y'all see this light. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Uh, does my light that I cast on the cast on the um, dagger, does that is that going to do... Uh, it goes 20 feet, 20 uh, foot bright and then 20 foot dim. So is that going to shine any more light on the orange or is that thing, or is the orange light still deeper in the cave? It's deeper in the cave. Are there any like torch sconces or anything? Not that what you can see. I was about to say, does this cave, does the tunnel look man-made and or or natural? Oh no, it's a natural looking cave. Okay. So far. Baritone's just, like I said, Baritone's just holding up the, his dagger light. (laughs) Hey, y'all got a torch. You might want to light this. Yeah, I was about to say, Kira's going to pull the torch out of her pack and use prestidigitation to light it. He's going to keep his little red, his red dagger light. (laughs) (laughs) What is that? Y'all got to move it? Shining flashlight left and right. (laughs) Yep. 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 Moving in. Okay. Call me irresponsible. Call me. So as you guys are moving forward in this cave, um, the light seems to be getting brighter, and eventually it turns from natural cave-like walls to now something man-made. As it gets brighter, I'm going to snuff out the... Uh torch give it time to cool and put it back in my pack yeah Valen is going to look at the wall see if there's any writing or anything that might denote who made this nope it's just smooth rock wall yeah I have a question Mm -hmm. so let me double check the wording of this oh never mind never mind no larger than 10 feet in any dimension Never mind. I was like, can I just touch the wall and just shoom? <laughs> can I light up a 10 foot portion of the wall? No. Anyway. <clears throat> no. Hey, look, I gotta add. I'm just asking. Just so, eat if that, I can. Wait, question, you... question. Would that make it a wonder wall? So you guys are walking forward in this cave. <laughs> you all take 10 <laughs> points a second. <laughs> <laughs> And a Tarrasque shows up. The end. All right. <laughs> that is uh, a very big lizard. <laughs> Misty um, stepped the fuck out of on. here. Dimension door. Grab Kira. Let's go, doll. <laughs> Paula just turns like, uh, Gavin, we're leaving. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys are walking down and the lights get brighter. And eventually you guys come into this small chamber with a um full onyx black dragon statue just right there i'm so glad you ended that with statue (laughs) um Um, would i recognize this dragon by chance or do i need to roll something no it's it's just a dragon oh it's just okay so there doesn't seem to be any like significance with it it's just no it is just a a dragon now, um, as you're taking a closer look at this dragon, you notice that um, there is a um, kind of... What does this monster have? <laughs> no, no, it is not. Um, there is a, a... Um, a an opening, like a spot in uh, a crevice almost in its, in its forehead. And um, at the base of the statue are three different colored gems. What colors are the gems? I think I've seen one of these before. It's called a Dramimic. (laughs) The first one is a red ruby color. The second one is a sapphire blue. And the third one is an emerald green. 
follow-up question. What does the rest of the room look like? It's just a a chamber that's lit up with torches. There doesn't seem to be any doors or stairs or anything like that. It's just this room and the statue. I would like to investigate do the are the gems like on like it to investigate the where the gems and the statue are. Specifically, I want to see if the gems are on some sort of pressure plate or something along those lines. And I'd like to see if there's any like dust or dirt that are on the statue to signify that it's been sitting here a long time untouched. Mm. Okay. Roll me a investigation. Playing around with this fucking... Well, I mean, I probably will end up playing around with it, but um, investigation, we are looking at a 21. So you are looking over this dragon statue. It is well taken care of. There is not a speck of dust on it. Oh, no. um, and as you're kind of examining the statue, um, you kind of shift your gaze down to the gemstones. And you're kind of looking, you're kind of looking. Don't touch There's... them yet. I'm going to take a look. It doesn't Please. seem to be on any pressure doesn't... plates or anything like that. <laughs> doesn't... <laughs> Smacks his hands. And it does a quick, <laughs> like, little light of his cigar. like, it's... And then blows <laughs> smoke on him, like... While they're doing that, Kira's gonna like move up, snuff here it out, <laughs> just and snuff out this torch that she's next to. Okay, like right there. Oh shit! <laughs> I wasn't even looking at Dimension Twenty. I was like, "Yeah, hey, I, I wasn't either. I was going entirely by like the theater of imagination." So we're both right there. <laughs> theater of the mind. Um. Oh no, I'm not that. I'm not like Stax. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> um, I need visual. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I would with the 21, would I be able to see is this thing is gonna sound really weird, but I'm just trying to verify I'm trying to rule something out in my brain. Is this thing centered on its like podium thing? Yes. On the podium, it is in the center of it. Okay. Kira is very suspicious. It looks stuff. like we're gonna have to put one of the gems in its head. But which one? Let's now hold on. As much as I, you know. <laughs> irresponsible um let's see if we can find some sort of writing or something else here before we Good just idea. start slotting things into dragons statues heads because i don't know if this comes alive or not that's true in my case we'd kind of investigate the room a little more see if there's anything of note besides yeah. the statue So what are you looking for exactly, Valen? So what we can see the on scroll? 20, that's the whole room? <laughs> yes. Uh, all, uh, the stuff you can see is what you can see. Is there anything with the torches? Anything of note? Nope. I Just guess, like, writing on the podium? Yeah, that's, that's why I said anything of note, like writing, stuff like that. Nope. Is there writing on the statue? Yes, there is. Oh. It's in Draconic. It? Oh, um, does anybody speak Draconic here? Dwarvish and Halfling in common. Abyssal. Oof. Common and Oof. Elvish. Oof. Uh, common in Dwarvish and Infernal. What a shame. <laughs> um, I wonder... The problem is, like, out of character, I I have an idea of what to do, but in, trying to figure out how in character Valen would know about it. Can I roll to see how much he actually knows about dragons? Like a history check? Sure, but at disadvantage. That's... Because they are not common in your area. But what about Jormungandr? <laughs> no. Uh, with disadvantage, uh, that's a three. You have no idea. And out of out of character, I have an idea, but fine. Um, I could have him just impulsively grab something, but uh, fuck me. <laughs> Baritone, I feel like you're in the same boat. <laughs> I have an idea, but it's also not gonna work. Make um, another deck save. Oh, 
more earthquakes. Uh, oh, everyone gets the plus three. three if they're within 10 feet of me. Uh, Nat 20 for a 29. 15. Nat 20, first Nat 20 of the day. Yay. 18. 13. <laughs> Another earthquake pops off. Everyone seems to keep their footing except for Kyra, who falls Here. on her butt. <laughs> Vaughn is going to help Kyra up. <laughs> Baritone's like just studying the wording, trying to like work it out, even though he doesn't speak draconic. Hmm. Um, how much does anyone else know about dragons? Um, can Karya make a history check, see if she knows anything? Sure. Same thing with Bear tone. Kira would get up and walk over there and just be like, I know they're big and oh. they have big, nasty, pointy teeth. <laughs> Bear tone's racking his brain. He's like, I, I don't fucking know. Like, Can I do an arcana check to maybe recognize something? What would you try to recognize in specific? Just like familiarity in the like runes or whatever i don't know mm. as a sorcerer maybe i came across something at some point no as i say you I... got a you got a spell that can you got like the <laughs> fucking spell thing to, uh, to really languages yeah no i don't i got um a 19 on the history check okay okay um boop, 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 boop. give me one second is, is there any correlation between I don't know why I have deep speech. I have no idea why. Oh, yeah, baritone. That's why. I'm dumb. Because I was going to make a dumb joke. But, of course, baritone can hit low notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This see, is like, what out, I get for the meme. Yeah, see, <laughs> out, out of character, the main clue I have is the fact that it's a the statue is like a black dragon. Yep. Uh, I had that same idea. So. Yeah, okay, we're, we're thinking um, the same thing. Karia. You would know that each colored dragon is associated with an element. So, All right. <laughs> blue's lightning, green's poison, red is fire, white is cold. Um, and black dragons are acid. Green gem. <laughs> what if we try the green gem? Vaughn immediately picks it up. <laughs> Baritone's Baritone's kind of cocks an eye eyebrow, like. And what makes maybe the rest green may gem? Well, black dragons use acid. Green is kinda, poison. He looks over at Kira, like. Well, hey, how do, how about this? Um, I'll put the Not gym in if you guys want the backup in case something goes wrong. Well, Karia, you seem to got the best guess out of anybody, so I'm down for it. Kira's already down with that plan of backing up. <laughs> She's going to step over here and put her cloak up and try to go hidden. Baritone's going next to her. I was about to go the other corner. I'm like, nope. Baritone's like, nope. Power numbers on this one in case I got to fucking bop the fuck up out of here. <laughs> Yep. Uh, Valen is going to start. How big is the statue? Uh, this statue is... Uh, hmm, probably six feet tall. So you could probably All easily right, so reach it's the a, top. It's about, it's about Valen's height. So yeah, he takes picks up the green gym, making sure everyone else is kind of far away, and he slides it into the dragon's head. Fallen, you see as its eyes glow green. And then the statue starts rumbling. And it slowly kind of moves back. Revealing a hidden staircase. <laughs> Everyone else in the room is just like, oh god, thank god. Bar <laughs> baritone, baritone like kind of puts his hand down. It's like, almost went to the moon. <laughs> Kira, Kira kind of lets out the breath she'd been holding for like a minute. 
That could have been. They call me real bad. irresponsible. <laughs> call me. He's singing to himself as much as he's singing to Kira to like yeah. keep us like I, keep it calm. Kira, Kira's just I'll, kinda like uh, whispering under her breath, just think like Ruby. Ruby. Oh, I'm just I'm thinking of I'm thinking of two. I'm thinking of names of I'm thinking of the names for the bar. What do you think we should call it? The dragon's tail. Well, the rat pack does sound nice, but also, you know, people rats, you know, might be I'm I'm you know, I'm I like the old name for the band, but uh, it should be in the what are you what are you thinking? Um you gotta plug it in. Valen is gonna head over to the staircase. He's a little worried that since the place is so clean that this place is inhabited. That's a fair assumption. Um he's gonna like let the others know he is gonna start walking down those stairs. Glaive Glaive is out and ready. We'll uh we'll we'll brainstorm some of those a bit later it's hard to focus on that but oh i am focusing over half my attention's on that because otherwise ten nine we're uh Where is heading going? down the stairs <laughs> yeah yeah Bar yeah baritone's moving like he's moving yeah he's, we're although now that he's in there he's very much like you know what i'm dying and it goes back to that really fine gray suit that he had on when he was performing in the street He's like, I'm dying, I'm dying, dressed, you know, dressed so, to kill. As all of yeah, you are yeah, going down this staircase, the statue <laughs> moves back into place. You're now all in darkness. Although, Valen, you should have dark vision. Yes. I do too. Okay. So Kyra, Valen, you could see where you're all going. <laughs> Baritone and Kara, Bar you're 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 blind. <laughs> are you uh, gonna pulls out the, see, pulls like, out the dagger, cast light. And Kari is going to pull out a torch and light it. It's always the dark, isn't it? It's always the um, do we see like a switch or lever that the... might be used to open the passage back up? If you I know. Be? I know, doll. I know you love the dark. Um, you right shadows. now, you don't. Mm -hmm. um, the only way is forward, I suppose. So you all are going down this uh this hallway and um you start seeing a light ahead of all of you it's like we got another room you fucking god damn it <laughs> <laughs> he uh as we get closer baritone's gonna like essentially just Turn off the dagger, and then just slide it back into his sleeve. Glaive is at the ready. <laughs> That's where he keeps his weapons. He keeps a dagger in his, he keeps a dagger in one sleeve, and his, and his, and his uh, derringer, aka hand crossbow, in the other sleeve. That's why he was like doing this little motion, like. Hey. So, um, yep, you guys are coming up to this room, you know and uh, got a flavor. Baritone, you hear some slight muttering. Kind of missions to everybody else. Um, can I make out any words that are being said, or would I have to roll for that one? Mm, no, you guys are getting close to the the doorway. You can uh, kind of see what looks to be a couple of cultists, kind of talking amongst themselves. Human cultists. <clears throat> Which way are they facing? Um, so there's kind of like a crate between them. I didn't put one in, but there's a crate between them. Uh, and they're kind of, they're playing cards. Okay. Are they and humanoid as far as we can tell? Yes, as far as you can tell. Is there a torchlight in the room as well? Yes, there is. All, that's all you can see is what I revealed to you all. Gotcha. Before we do anything, Baritone's going to stop kind of the group. He's going to look at uh, Kira and then is going to say Moonlight Serenade which you would know means kill the lights in the room and hit them hard because he can't do much but he can at least help kill the lights to then put it in darkness I was about to say I, I also have thaumaturgy well he he's just he just says that to Kira Kira oh, knows like bad. what that game plan is just because like they've been traveling together so they kind of have like fly me to the moon is like let's get the fuck out of here like call me responsible is like 
I mean, we might as well fucking try some shit. I'm just you. Oh, you're not muted. <laughs> But yeah, that was like Moonlight Serenade. And I was like, that, that's a Sinatra song. That works for this. <laughs> you have just a list of songs pulled up. I have the best of Frank Sinatra in front of me because I already had that on my iTunes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, I do like Sinatra. And like, that's why I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, 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 yeah. let's just do Sinatra. Yeah. Oh, see, like, normally, normally with me, it's uh, <clears throat> Johnny Cash. That's like one part mm. I want to make one, at some point. That would, ooh, young Johnny or old Johnny? Um, because that would be kind of cool no matter which way you split that. I was about to say, I'm thinking, like in terms of like the song choices and whatnot, old Johnny, mm. but kind of more of the little like the little suaveness of the young Johnny. Okay, so not quite right. like at the very end of his life, but like a little bit in front of that. All right, sorry. All right, Queen, I have an idea of what I would like to do. As as, as he says, uh, I don't remember. What, what is, yeah, yeah, that thing. I'll just kind of give a nod and a wink and uh she's gonna cast prestidigitation and on the far wall like right here i don't know how to ping uh, i think you just click and hold yeah oh yeah right there um <clears throat> i'm gonna cast prestidigitation and remembering one of the runes i see i saw on the dragon statue i'm gonna kind of like make that appear on the wall like glowing okay to try and get their attention okay uh so you you cast your spell and um those this how big are you making this rune look um probably about like five feet by five feet okay so fairly big um this rune shows up on the wall and the cultists immediately take notice because of a glowing rune and they're looking like what the fuck and their attention is now on the rune Go for it. As that <laughs> as that's happening, I just kind of glance. Um, I glance at Valen. Just like Valen's glaive up, like I'm ready. <laughs> Hope you can see in the dark, champ. I cast. Um, actually, hang on. Is Bardic Inspiration? Hang on. I just want to make sure it's something real quick. Bardic. Ins- All right. So I'm giving you Bardic Inspiration. Yes. So I kind of give. I do like. It's all on you, champ. Shoot him a wink. And then that's, uh, so yeah, now you have Bardic Inspiration, which is going to be a, a 1d8 uh, that you can use on uh, ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Perfect. Uh, it, can, it can be ro- added after the roll, uh, but before knowing the outcome. Um, and then, so I cast that as a bonus action, and then as an action, I'm going to cast, uh, how many torches are in the room? Is it just um, the one? There's a couple, I just didn't put them in the room. So there's, okay. here, I'll, I'll draw one. Um, so... There's one here. There's one here. Uh, we're not seeing. I don't see that. I hate these freaking layers. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I see one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. The other ones. I kind of get a tail end of it. So the other ones there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to kill the light. I'm going to use press dissertation to snuff out the torch to the right. So I'm going to kill that one. Okay, so... So I inspire him, so then it, now it should be darker, at least now there should be shadows, like... Uh, Valen is gonna... Oh, Im- there we go. Yeah, Valen's gonna, like, immediately charge right here to start swinging. And then Kira's gonna duck in the room and go over into the darkness in the corner with her hood up to stealth over there. Mm-hmm. All right. No, 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 we're just gonna keep going, keep going. Karia, I believe in you. you got yeah, this. Also, don't forget you have a plus three to initiative. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I was hoping to get like a little bit of a surprise round here. Like, yeah. Well, no, that's the thing. Remember, if I crit, I'm a smite. <laughs> mm-hmm. We will delete us. <laughs> you can't yell at us because you're on camera. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I will lay fire upon you the moment his camera's off. All right. Uh, Fun fact: I step three feet that way, and I'm no longer on camera. <laughs> <sighs> so, <laughs> one mute. Balin, you're swinging. Feet. Who else I'm is swinging? Full. Who else? What? What's happening? You all, all right. get one reaction. 
Yeah, so Kira's going I'm going full offense. Kira's going in the room in the corner, and she's going to cast Chill Touch on this one right here. Valen, which one are you attacking? Uh, if I see the Chill Touch, I'll go after this one. Okay. Uh, bu -bu 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 wait. Yes. Yeah, okay. Karia. So, yeah. Karia um, still got hers. Yeah, Karia's gonna go in and she's gonna attack the same guy as Valen. Yeah, yeah. Baritone literally just steps into the room. Is like as soon as like is immediately just like, you got this, boop, and like kills the light for um, Kira to like kind of slip underneath it, just be like, whoop, I'm in shadow. <laughs> you don't see me. Now you see me, now you don't. Okay, so um I guess we'll start off with uh Kira. Roll the hit, please. Okay. Whew, that was close. That's a twenty-six to hit. That'll hit. Operation Moonlight Serenade. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's uh ten necrotic damage. And it would be grabbing, so <clears throat> um, if you hit an, an, oh no, never mind. It's not, well, unless it's undead, but <laughs> uh, and it can't regain hit points till the start of your next turn. Until then, the hand clings to the target. So. Okay, um, baritone, you already did your reaction. Yeah, my reaction was the inspiration, the light. So that's that's it for me. Okay. Um, Valen. Do I have advantage? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. oh yeah, would I have had had advantage too? Yes. Just in that case is I crit. crit on first hit. <laughs> no, nope, it was the same exact roll. So. That is crit. <laughs> that's a crit. That's a crit. <laughs> All right, roll that crit damage. Roll that beautiful crit footage. The hell does Moonlight Serenade even sound? And I think I'm going to add a smite on top of that. I mean, it's just a cultist. <laughs> it's just... It's just do a what what he's... <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Uh, I think you I got mean, him. Do you want what he's just, having? No? It's That's 17 right. damage Justice. on the first hit. Okay. <laughs> Is he still alive? He's still oh. alive. <laughs> then I'm gonna swing again. <laughs> oh god. Um, this uh, does a twenty-seven hit. Yeah, it hits. It's just a cultist. <laughs> murder this one. <laughs> this poor cultist. And that would be fourteen damage. He's still standing. <laughs> What? Yeah! Oh, I will smite. Wait, no, no, no. Pull our master. And I'm going to smack him with the pommel. Oh, God! <laughs> I will kill this. <laughs> That's a 20-something. How do you do it? Because he only had 2 HP. <laughs> That's going to be 9 damage. I just, I just, like, you see his jaw just break as I just bring the, the pull, <laughs> the glaive back with the, with the, uh, the, as you know, Corby, the this... goat horn pommel. Oh, God, I, I kind of love this because like there's just this rune that shows up in the back. They're like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> boom, <laughs> boom, boom. Oh. Like, what's that? Light goes <laughs> off. The fuck. <laughs> the skeletal hand just grabs the other one. Oh fuck. Yeah, light goes off. All here's get that motherfucker. <laughs> you want what he's having? Justice. All right, that that justice. Kyle, right, what that's... are you what are you doing? He's going to be uh, like, oh, damn it. I get dibs on the next one. <laughs> we'll see. Karya, I oh, would assume you, you would see the um, the the spell that um, Kira casts. It's kind of illuminating yes. where the la the other bandit is. So yeah. you wanna move next to him, you can. All right. She'll move over next to him then. And take a swing at him. Okay, roll for you can you have advantage because it's dark. I would move to the other side of him because he's facing the wall. 
go over there and well, no, well i mean he, i'm sure he'd looking. be looking at you because he just cast the spell on him but like where's it why did the light go out oh god skeletal hand <laughs> <laughs> oh god but she has advantage anyway because it's dark so i mean okay I assume a 24 hits. Yeah, that, 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 that again, it's just a cultist. It's a poor little cultist. <laughs> wrong place, wrong time, buckaroo. <laughs> little Palin does not like to show mercy. <laughs> that is 15 damage. Okay. Yeah, so He's in still Palin's standing case. Does she get her second attack or is that only an initiative? I'll allow it. Okay. Two attacks per action. <laughs> that is a nat 20. How, how do you do it? Oh, brutal critical. Brutal critical. How do you, how, how? How do, you she, do it? It's just... She's just going to cut him in half. Oh my God. <laughs> right down the middle. Barbarian. Kaya, y'all takes are... it over her head. <laughs> Murder hobos over here. <laughs> Baritone. Because, like, the other torch is still lit in the other corner, right? So, like, there's still a little bit of light, but it's, like... So you definitely see the, these two, the ones that were on mounts, just end these two. Oh. <laughs> Maritone wipes a bit of the blood that got on him, like, <laughs> off of his face. <laughs> and then press the digitations that torch back on. You just see one of them is, like, has two gashes, and his jaw is, like, liquid. And then the other one is like bisected. Um, as I see like the the bisected cultist on the floor, I'm gonna snuff that torch that he just <laughs> lit up again. <laughs> I don't uh, need yeah. to see that. I don't. Uh... Well, not that I wouldn't see it anyway. I have dark vision. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm gonna you, I'm gonna too... look around the room for. But... Uh, for future reference, whenever we have the chance to take somebody hostage to ask questions about, you know, everything going on, can we not I, break their face and or cut them in half? I, I mean, you, 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 you just said go get them. <laughs> and I did. And, uh, and I guess well, now, I, now should, I, know. I should have said that. I know. Yes. You notice the light under this uh, this door over here, which I will reveal to you. <gasps> Where? Reveal, not hide. Uh, reveal, not hide. Reveal yourself. There we go. Uh, okay. You can see the door, <laughs> right? <laughs> He's yes. All right. Let me allow me to rephrase. Moonlight serenade is we kill the lights. And then we take them down without killing them. Baritone. That is what we see. So now just we know. slow not the, the slow knot of understanding. See the just... light yeah, under fine. this door. Kind of get a little darker as something Hold up the is behind the door, <laughs> and you hear just this like scratching at this door and snarling and growling. I killed the other light. I kill the other light uh, in the room, so now the room is dark, and I take a step back, and then I just very quis look, quietly whisper, there's something bawling at the door. I don't know if we can see in the dark, but uh, if you guys can see, that'd be a good time. I got one chance to blind this thing. I'm able to see in uh, non-magical darkness. Okay, so get in the corners and get out ready. Uh, Kario, can you see right now? I can't see a thing. Kira, can you guide her to the wall and get her out of the way? Because I can see oh. roughly where that little, <clears throat> the little slit of light, so I imagine once that door opens, there's going to be light. Kira's going to whisper semi-loudly to Karia. To you be hear like, another loud thud against the door <laughs> as it's, this thing is trying to break in. So uh, Balin going is going to get over on the side of the door, basically ready to bring the glaive down. Kira's um, going to move... I forward a little bit and grab her and bring I her back like to the to corner. Hold pyrotechnics. Um, you hear another loud thud against the door. Fuck. 
as the door shakes a bit. Yep, I'm holding pyrotechnics, so as soon as that door opens, I am hitting that door. Actually, um, Valen, where are you actually standing? Can you move your guy on D20 and just yeah, uh, Give me one so second. My focus. grandma's calling me. Uh, it won't be more than a minute. Sorry. Okay. So Valen, I think, is near the door. Okay. Because I'm trying to think, because I got a 10 foot I got to worry about. Um, but yeah, as soon as that door opens, I'm going to hit it with some pyrotechnics, and it's just going to do a big... Hang on, let me double check. I got the range for that. Yeah, 60 feet. Cool. Um, so yeah, as soon as that door burst open, I'm going to hit the corner kind of away from uh, Valen to where he's not going to like flashbang him to try to stun wherever the fuck kind of burst through that door. Okay. Are so all of you it's essentially... where you're going to be? Yep. <laughs> Actually, so if, I don't know, if, if Valen is on that side of the door, I'd probably want to be on the opposite corner over here. <clears throat> Just for better line of sight. Mm -hmm. Are all of you ready? Yeah. The door swings open. The light pours into the room. Kind of blinds you a bit, but you see the silhouette of this scaled creature on all fours. And it's snarling and growling. And... See this. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, once again, as soon as that door burst open, pyrotechnic. Is that a roll to hit? Uh, no, that is a constitution save um, oh, on its part. Okay. Has to, be, has to be 16. Unnatural 20. So this thing bursts yeah, into the nothing, room. I got nothing. I got nothing to. <laughs> I got nothing to stop that. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> this thing. Can I use my luck die that I have for subscribing to Dungeon Mechanics? No. Nope. Use that to make it. No. 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 That's only for live shows. Uh, <laughs> so this uh, this Drake comes in, um, and all of you like Baritone uses pyrotechnics and it just like shrugs it off. And Baritone, you try not to move because it is still dark, and this Drake is scanning the room, and then it locks eyes with you. Okay. Um, I need all of you to roll yeah, for initiative. Okay. Uh, we also get a plus three to our initiative. Or, or wait, what, what's his radius? 30 feet? For what? He said you get a plus three to initiative and to saving throws because we're like... I think within 10 out. feet from him. 10 feet, yeah. Okay. I'm not in 10 feet. <laughs> Neither am I. Not uh, if you are, by the look of it. Yeah. I rolled a 20. 15 for baritone. Uh, I'm going to let my dog out real quick. Be right back. 14. Okay. Let me just... yeah. <clears throat> Might be a good time for a break because I have to pee. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll, we'll take a break. Be right back.
<laughs> it is possible that it doesn't know you're there. You are around, like immediately around the corner from it. So, yeah. Well, I imagine the door is open. I'm kind of behind the door. <laughs> well, I imagine the door is broken. That's... Like, I imagine the door went down. Yeah. Safe bet. Okay. So, um, I'm... how can I turn the music down on my end? So you hit the cog at the top right at dimension tw- or uh, t- at um, roll twenty, not dimension twenty. Um, and then if you go underneath uh, in my settings, master music volume, it should be right there at the top. Okay. And you can just click and drag that left and right, depending on loud or quiet. All right. Okay. All right, go time. <clears throat> All right. Ear lizard, lizard, lizard. So first up in the initiative, it is Valen. <laughs> probably need a booper here but oh well all right i'm going to i'm gonna attack i'm gonna go full full tilt okay go for it do i have advantage does it know i'm there it probably it has dark vision so we can see you okay just (sighs) and i see it just because it's in the silhouette of the light correct gonna be a 26 that'll hit for the first swing that's going to be a 23 for the second swing. And then it's going to be a uh, 11 for the pommel strike. So only two of them go through. And I'm going to use first level first level smites on both of those swings. Okay, just tell me the damage. Yep. That's going to be 38 damage overall. Okay. So, Gavin, you kind of rush in. You hit this creature with your glaive, kind of taking a couple slashes at it, and you try to hit it with the pommel, but it kind of, like, leaps back. Yeah, just that swing, swing, and then coming around with that, but that's just a little too short. (laughs) Hitting it with that radiant energy. (laughs) Ooh, um, no, too late. I was gonna see if Bardic Inspiration would be able to get it to hit, but never mind. I'll use it on the next one. Uh, is that your your turn? That's my turn. <laughs> Kira. I can't do much else. <laughs> All right. Um. <clears throat> hmm. <coughs> Hold on. Okay. Um. We're going to start off with uh, another chill touch. Okay. So that is a 19 to hit. That'll hit. And that's 10 points of necrotic. And then I'm going to bonus action stealth. Want me to roll? For stealth, I guess. What are you trying to hide behind? Because there's <clears throat> that crate is it, is here, it... but there was really nothing else. Is it still kind of dark in the room? It has dark yeah. vision. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Because yeah, Never judging mind. by <laughs> it looking I'm, at so baritone, was... you immediately so guess. <laughs> She does have the el- the cloak of elven kind on, the hood up. So, I don't know if that would. What does that? Do? You would you would you would need to like if you had something that uh like stalker that allowed you to like hide in dim light, that would be one thing. But if you don't have something like that to where you can pretty much just hide in like a dark spot, then. Also, dark vision doesn't work on magical darkness. <laughs> so you can yeah. really put out the lights. 
as the as the cloak's color shifts to camouflage you, just I don't know. <clears throat> um, it says you have advantage on dexterity stealth checks made to hide as the cloak's color shifts to camouflage you. I will allow it because its attention currently is on Valen. Bring it on. Okay. So. Well. <clears throat> that's a 15 for stealth. Yep. Uh, you see as the cloak kind of like changes color to that gray cobblestone color and kind of camouflages you against the wall. Does that end your turn? It does. Wonderful. Um, Baritone, you hear footsteps coming towards this, uh, this space behind the drake. And I will reveal. And you see as Cultus shows up. Oi, what you got in there, Drake? <laughs> and he's just gonna move forward. And that will kind of end his turn. Baritone. Okay. Uh, I am going to cast there's nothing I can really I'm going to go ahead and hit oh that's touch okay Okay, so he's going to whip out his Derringer, his Derringer crossbow, just kind of like, psh, psh. I'm going to cast, because it can, like, I can tell, or at least I know that it locked eyes with me, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to cast light on my crossbow bolt. Which is an action. Okay. Now. It's not a light melee weapon, so I can't use the hand crossbow as a bonus action, can I? No. Uh, no, only if you no. had crossbow expert. Can I make a correction? Sure. You have to make, you have, I think you have to make. Can I? Attack. Can I, uh, when you take the attack action and attack with a damn it? Never mind, because I was gonna just light up I the mean, dagger that, that, and throw the. I dagger love it at when it. players just answer their own questions. Yeah, well, technically, you throwing a dagger would count as an attack action, but unfortunately, casting light is an action. True. So I wouldn't be able to throw the dagger as a bonus action. Um. Yeah. Okay, so then what we're going to do then instead uh, is we are going to give... We're going to use... Ah, I don't know what the cultist is going to fucking see. Uh, I'm going to hit... I'm sorry, I should have had this planned out. You're Pulled fine. out the Derringer, and I'm going to take a shot. Is the cultist protected by the drake like yes. is the drake blocking the cultist okay yes then i'm gonna take a shot at the uh at the drake with the um with the derringer okay roll it uh that is gonna be a 23 to hit that'll hit uh and that is going to be uh seven damage seven piercing damage how do you do it um, so this thing comes in and you, it fires, obviously like it's doing its crazy shit, like breaks down the door. I throw the flash at it. That doesn't work. Goddamn little paladin that could over there fucking smacking the shit out of it. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I couldn't remember your name. 
You don't, you don't have your name changed in the Zoom call, so it's fucking me up because like Lancey Poo takes a swing at it. <laughs> um, so Valen, you know, cracks it. Uh, uh, Kyra fucking hits it, and I just take one shot. I just I'm aiming center mass, so I'm just putting a bolt right through its chest. Um, and then I'm gonna look over at uh, Kira before my turn's done. It's like, dull. We've been here before. And you get Bardic Inspiration. Nice. And I'm, I'm fucking bop, 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 bop. <laughs> <laughs> that your Game turn? on. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll be my turn. Okay. Uh, so you have a 1d8. And those will only last for 10 minutes, by, bear in mind. Yes. Karia, it's your Karia turn. Karia is going to do nothing because she can't save. You would see the light from the room, right? The doorway. Yes, the yeah. door. The door was is yeah. So you can see. So it's essentially dim light in the room. You'd probably okay. see the cultist. Can well, she? No, the cultist is still in the room. Oh, in the other room. Yeah, it's in the other room. So if anything, you might see the shadow, depending on how the DM wants to play it. As of right now, you can't see anything. So you see the light. There was a big. You know, there was a big fucking dragon thing <laughs> in the door. Can Karia see enough to be able to move? Yes. All right, then she's just going to move over this way and stand near-ish to Valen. Okay. And that'll end her turn if she can't see the cultist. Okay. Um. So you hear this roar coming from the room. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I had a feeling there wasn't just one. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And There's you a see... on team. She knew we'd nuke it. And you see as this thing leaps over the dead body of this Drake, crashes into the room, sees you, Karia, and attacks you. Okay. Uh, question. Is it within 10 feet of me? Mm. Or like whatever right it is moving into the room, would it... It is 10 it feet from you. So, I will use my reaction as an opportunity attack because of Polar Master. Mm -hmm. And if I hit, its movement speed is reduced to zero because Sentinel. Gotta love it. One, two punch. Okay. It's probably not going to hit, though. Uh, is it 15? Bardic Inspiration! Nope. Bardic Inspiration! That... That's right. That's uh. right. That's right. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> oh! 21! Woo! Yep, that hits. <laughs> so, that'll be just normal damage. I'm not... Smi I won't be smiting on that. Um, but it's movement speed. So, basically, the moment I hit it, it's like hitting it in the leg and stopping it from running. Okay. This is only the moment okay. I see it. So, I love this, how that'll be thirteen how damage. Queen is like you, motherfucker. <laughs> how much damage does the Drake take? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Okay. Uh, more or less getting its attention on me. Well, no, it's still going to attack Karia. Uh, Karia does a fourteen and a fifteen hit. A fifteen does. It does. Okay. You take um eight bludgeoning damage as uh it takes its tail and just slaps it across your face. Okay. Nah. And then uh, you hear a voice in the room. Oi! Go get him! And you hear another snarl coming from the room. And it is going to leap in. And it's going to come over here. To you, Baritone. Does it go... Does it go within um, Kira's range? Uh... 
Range I don't of... know what path it took for a uh, opportunity attack. Um, so it just came in through the door and just came straight through. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm honestly, just... I don't have any weapons out at the moment anyway. Slap, <laughs> Slap yeah. it on the ass. Hey! So does a 14 Boom or... Boom <laughs> Bad trick. Does a 14 or a 12 hit? Nope. Cool. <laughs> All right, and that will Kari, be. Kari, what is going on with your camera? Hmm? Drake's turn. What is going on with your camera? I have no idea. I'm going to rave. <laughs> I don't know how to make it stop doing that. Can you close the lens cap, like, real quick and maybe see and then bring it back up? Maybe it's having trouble focusing light wise. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. It's it fine. Stop. It's fine. <clears throat> And um, Karia all of a sudden starts glowing with this suspicious <laughs> light. <laughs> the power the of rage. the rage. That's a rage. Just <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, hang on. New subclass idea. Rave Barian. <laughs> Get out. It specializes in two-handed weapons. Uh, two single-handed weapons. AKA Colin, it is your turn. Glow we... sticks? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so the one that's closer to me. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I'm going to move here, or yeah, here. And I'm going to attack. Actually, if anything, I'm going to move here because there's more room. And that's when I finally see the stupid cultist. <laughs> to which then I'm going to attack the cultist. Okay. It's a 17 plus 8. That'll hit. I'm just going through my 17 plus 8, 19 plus 8, and the 13 plus 8. So all my attacks hit. I'm not going to smite for these, though. Let's see. It's 13. It's 22. So 28 damage to him. Okay. Yeah, this cult cultist is uh, hurting pretty bad. Paul's <laughs> <laughs> just gonna look at him. Run! <laughs> is that an intimidation? <laughs> Want me to roll intimidation? Yeah, roll intimidation. See if or probably scared. with him, it'd be more like a squeak. Like, Run! <laughs> <laughs> um, for him, it'd be a fifteen. Um, uh, cultist is a little freaked out, but he's still holding his ground. That's fair. <laughs> that end your turn? Mm -hmm. Kira, it's your turn. All right. So as I see this uh, Drake come in and square up to Baritone, I'm going to take <laughs> some offense to that. Um... <clears throat> Don't let me die like this. <laughs> Oh, please let him die like this. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't think I'm going to die like this. Oh, here it goes. <laughs> We're going to hit it with an infestation. Okay. Mm. That's a con save. It fails. It's a seven. All right. <clears throat> so... Um... <clears throat> Takes uh, 2d6 poison damage, which is 4, as well as um, it has to move 5 feet in a random direction. So I'll roll the d4 here. So 4. Please get closer to me. Which is west. And it moves into my range. Well, no, the other one's in front of it. I won't. Yeah, it does say. move into uh, Karia's range. Well, no, would, it, would there be an attack of blade. opportunity from anything? Unless she's got sentinel feet or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, 
I've got Polar Master and Sentinel combo. <clears throat> also known as Lockdown. Yeah. Get over here! <laughs> and then Kira's gonna try to hide again. Okay, roll for stealth. Alright. Let's see. That one's better. It's a 19. Oh, yeah. You're hidden again. Does that end your turn? It does. Uh, so this cultist is going to disengage and run. Opportunity attack. No, I disengaged. Sentinel doesn't matter. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> roll the <to> hit. <laughs> I completely forgot. <laughs> I like, I disengaged. I don't um, care. <laughs> boop. <laughs> so, and I crit. <laughs> and oh, like, no. <laughs> He's just a poor little it, it, skull it, it, so, <laughs> Is he dead? <laughs> yeah, he's dead! How do you do it? So yeah, you see Valen like, he's about to turn to fight the Drake, but sees him about to run. So he just, phoom, lets the glaive like slide in his hand and grabs the pommel as the blade just <laughs> into the back of the guy's head. <laughs> Bear tells what's going to get up words with you after this, but right now he's yeah, not. You must, you must, you must understand, Sarah. The idea is that no one, can, no one wants to get near me. But if you are, you cannot escape me. Because <laughs> remember, you cannot I hit with an opportunity me. attack. They Queen drop zero like, feet of movement. They Queen literally like, cannot run away as I can hit. Killing these people is so much harder than I thought. Not killing these people is so difficult. Okay. Um, I was about to say, baritone found the in. first bar. Roll yeah. me a perception check. Oh, no. Cultist turns into a giant dragon. <laughs> That's a five. <laughs> okay. You don't hear anything. We never said Valen was paying attention to anything other than the fight. <laughs> oh my goodness. Baritone. That's probably why he's so good at it. So what... This one's hit with infestation, right? Yes. Alright, so it's just... Okay. I... Based on the wording of the spell, I don't get to pick anything. It's just, it's going to hit all creatures in that 10-foot range. So, sorry, buddy. Hit me. I got good failing. I got, I got uh, good saves. So, he, um, so this one, this Drake takes away and Baritone's like, oh, what? Don't want to stay for the fireworks? And hits uh, in this corner. Oh, sorry, hang on. Hits uh, in this corner. Another pyrotechnics as just a, a just rainbow of fireworks just <laughs> sparse out. Uh, so both Drakes and um, Valen need to make a constitution saving throw of 16. Or be blinded. That's a 26. <laughs> Okay. So one of them got a seven, the other one got an eighteen. Okay. Mm. So, I so guess this which one is, which failed. Blinded. Okay, makes sense. Covered in bugs, now blind. <laughs> um, Why me? Just having a bad time. <laughs> uh, and then as a bonus action, uh, Baritone's gonna look uh, right at Karia. You only go around once, but if you play cards right, once is enough. And you have Bardic Inspiration. Okay, and that's a D8? A D8 to use on an attack. A... Sorry, let me read that. Um, an ability check, an attack roll, or a saving throw. Basically, anything okay. you roll a D24. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. Does that end your turn, Baritone? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Actually, no. I'm gonna move. Uh, I'm gonna sidestep because I don't know what. Oh God. Sorry. Uh, I don't know who got blinded and who didn't. 
I'm assuming this one did, but I'm gonna move yeah, th around this, it. This one's blinded. Yeah, so I'm gonna move kind of around it to try to get a little bit of uh Essentially stop being where I was in case this thing tries to whip around. Like, hey, I know you're over there. <laughs> <laughs> Daria. All right, she's going to whack the uh, drake that's in front of her. Whack it good. Whack it real good. Like right in front of you or the blind yep. one? Okay. The one that's right in front of me, the one that hit me. Very rude. It was. That's a dirty 20 to hit. That'll hit. For 15 damage. Ooh. Okay. Second roll. Twenty-two to hit. That'll hit. Or seventeen damage. Okay. And um, I forgot to do this before hitting it, so I'm gonna do it now. She's gonna go into a rage. Okay. And that'll end her turn. Okay, that one's dead. All right, so uh, this one sees you, Valen. Does a 17 or a 22 hit? He is not here. Oh, he's not here. Look at his character sheet. <laughs> yeah, he didn't put it in the uh, thing. What a dirtbag. How dare he. <laughs> uh, you know what? Karia does a <laughs> 17 or a 22 hit. Both hit. That's all we got to do? I'll be right back. So <laughs> you're, you get 12 points of total damage let me, from let this me, thing. Let me make sure Baritone leaves the leaves the campaign <laughs> so she can't see my catch. <laughs> so... This thing, like, bites down on you, shakes you about, tosses you aside, and then it whips around with its tail and smacks you across the face again. <laughs> Her is getting tired of getting smacked in the face. <laughs> but you are raging. You are raging now, so you are resistant. Yes, so you take half of 12, so 6. Okay. Got you, boo-boo. <laughs> what kind of barbarian is Karya? Um, I don't know. What? It doesn't <laughs> say. It doesn't say on her sheet. It just says she's uh, a path of the totem warrior. Yeah. Oh, that. Are you a? Okay. All right. Um, this thing is blind. Is there any way for it to break free of the infestation or the blindness? Uh, the infant station is uh, instant. Um, yeah, that's a one turn thing. Oh, it's a one turn. Yeah. Oh, okay, got it. All right, cool. And the blindness. Give me just a moment to verify. Uh, each creature within Cathedral or become blinded until the end of your next turn. So it's my next turn is when it becomes. Okay, when it can cool. See again. All right. Um, so, no. They're going to attack, but with disadvantage. Okay. Well, yeah, it's going uh, to roll. Karia, it's it's going to roll a perception roll here. If you if you're bear totem, which I imagine you are, you're resistant to like fucking everything other than psychic, right, right. now. Okay. So just be aware of that. <laughs> All right. Baritone, no, no, no. You're good. You're good. You see, as this Drake, kind of like tilts its head a bit. Listening. Oh, eat a dick. Oh, eat a dick. <laughs> listening. <laughs> it rolled an 18 fight. for a perception. <laughs> Everyone hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just, uh, its although its eyes are still kind of black, hold, tight, tightly shut, it look—it moves its head and it's looking at you. And it's going to blindly okay. attack you. 
Okay, so it'd be attacking with disadvantage then, correct? Because yes. it's blind as fuck? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Calm down. You roll a, if you roll a double 20, I'm calling hacks. Calm down. So a 7 and a 12. Oh. Baritone's cool as cucumber. <laughs> Paul is not. <laughs> so you see as this thing like, tries to like lunge at like... you it tries to lunge at you and you kind of like step out of the way and then it tries to swing at you with its tail and you like duck <laughs> Airtone's like on the inside is just <laughs> inside's like that was close <laughs> and it is Valen's turn oh no there is a this this one right. Which All one? right, so without I mean, leaving this one's combat area, I'm gonna swing on the blinded one. Oh, this poor thing! I'm gonna kick. I'm gonna kick this, this thing. This poor off. thing! You did it! <laughs> no, you put him in a room did. with me. <laughs> no, you I'm brought it here. I didn't bring you. this drink to this fight. <laughs> I'm Look, not you know, it was supposed you. to come play, and you decided to blind it. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> it was uh, snarling. So be... I don't think that's very Yeah, funny. excuse me if the yeah. large dog that somebody has at their house charges at me, that I'm not going to be like, oh, puppy. I'm going to be like, <laughs> of course. Ah. Um, Let's just wait till I so bring the out my strike puppy. was the crit. <laughs> But all three Did you hit with the hit. other two? Okay, I was gonna say, did you hit with the other two? Yeah, no, I hit with the, the other two like pretty solidly, and then just the final like, all right, let's see what he does with the dinky pommel. Oh, crit! The guy, the thing he broke a dude's jaw with. I'm gonna save on smites for now. Yeah, I was gonna say, let's not burn through all our fun stuff yet. Thirteen. So that's going to be 37 damage. <laughs> Balin is just a whirlwind of pain. He's secretly <laughs> Doom Guy. Does that end your turn, Balin? Yeah. <laughs> I love the like, ha! Huh, I'm a I'm an easygoing character. Murder, 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 murder. <laughs> just eyes glow. Rasenga, Rasenga. That is my what your fucking is my body. Oh god. Your Rasenga yeah, no, is just, just smite. Rasenga, Rasenga, Rasenga. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, just the eyes start glowing. Just <clears throat> All right. Um combat mode initiated. So, now that I've, you know, swarmed this thing with bugs and then he's been blinded <laughs> and now, was just beating it. Now <laughs> he's about to experience more bugs the noxious gas of the poison spray hmm. for con save con save I can't tell if she's proud or hates us. That uh, fails. So I think she keeps forgetting that. I, I was about to say I know a lot of the tricks for characters. Oh <laughs> god damn it! That's a horrible roll for two d twelve. Four damage. Poison. Kira, roll me a perception check. Yeah, Corvi. Just oh, understand this build is much more terrifying when you have a barbarian. <laughs> That's an 18 for perception. So you blow this noxious poisonous gas at this drake. And it kind of just like snorts the poison spray away. Hmm. Doesn't seem bothered by it. <clears throat> it is immune to poison. Great. Oh, but I, I would have probably noticed that when I cast infestation because that was poison damage as well. 
That would have been good to know. I'm pretty sure I said that. Did I? But I don't remember. Check the check the tapes. <laughs> <laughs> check the tapes. Either way, that's fine. It's alright. The damage has been done. Yeah. Um. And now is that it, and it, your it drinks turn? a health potion. <laughs> Kira. Um, and then I'm gonna try to hide again. Roll the stealth. Uh, that's not a good one. That's a better one. Nineteen. Yeah, you're, Are you're hiding you're behind hidden. corpses now. <laughs> <laughs> Just blending in with the wall. Baritone. Baritone is going. To you are between a wall and a drake. <laughs> blind drake. Very, very keen. That was about to be not there. blind after this turn. I know. <laughs> I am aware. Thank you, though. <laughs> Missy <Mrs>. Step. Uh, <laughs> um, Baritone's going to look into the room here. And is going to misty step into the room. Okay. So he just kind of takes a glance over at Kira and like, "Don't worry, doll. No, we got this." Shoots her a wink and then misty steps uh, right there. Okay, I'll go ahead and reveal. God, you, you oh, may God. have made the best or worst decision. <laughs> well, I got out of the immediate danger. If there's more danger in here, that's one thing. We all but... learned today. Um, Baritone, you enter into this room and you see a, um, like a big, like, uh, dining table almost, like a really long dining table. Um, there is food on this table. Um, obviously there are a couple of chairs that were, have been kind of like pushed back to knock over. Uh, but yeah, so out of all the chairs, two of them were knocked over. Okay. Uh, do I see, is there anybody or anything in here? Any open doors, anything like that that I can see? Um, no, but you do see closed doors. Okay. You see um, this door here, this door here, and then a massive stone door here. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to take a step around the dead body. Looking at the body and realizing that this thing's head is like, this guy's head is like fucking <laughs> severed. <laughs> and is like, he's gonna make a mental note, being like, <laughs> nearly headless Nick. Yeah, nearly headless fucking Nick here. And then uh, I'm gonna take a shot at this Drake here. Okay. Um, and that will be a. Uh, that's probably gonna sail wide. Um, does a 15 hit? Um. A 15 does not. Does not hit. All right, yeah. So he, Missy steps through, ten, kind of takes a step, kind of like looking at that thing like, God damn it, and then just with a derringer. And you see as the bolt just flies past this Drake's head. Oops. It kind of pricks up its head and just looks to where this bolt came from. Mm-hmm. Baritone's just there kind of like this, like smiling. <laughs> Karia! Taro, Taro. Karia's gonna take swings at the Drake in front of her again. Right. The blinded Drake is no longer blind, by the way. Wonderful. Brilliant. <laughs> Not afraid of either of you. 21 for the first attack. That'll hit. For 15 damage, or wait, it's 15 plus an extra two because I'm raging. So 17. How do you do it? It'd be plus three, isn't it? Um, according to this, I it's think it plus depends two. On level. <laughs> bam, bam. She's just gonna chop its head off. Yeah, it should be a plus three at least. Okay. So many decapitations. I know! 
Never. Heads will roll for this. <laughs> I mean, in in my case, it's more mutilation in general. <laughs> and then um, Kari is gonna. Kari is a good boy. Let me just step over here. Mutilate. And she's, she's such going a good to... boy. Murder. <laughs> and she's going to use her second attack on the other Drake. Okay. Build it. Twenty-two to hit. That'll hit. Sixteen damage. How do you do it? Slicing <laughs> it down the side. Oh, oh, you're gonna spill its guts everywhere. Yep. So you splash. slice this thing, and it just falls over, twitching a bit as, like, blood's just pulling on the ground <laughs> next to it. Yeah. As soon as Valen sees there's no danger, he just takes his mask off. <laughs> just, I thought we were supposed to keep one alive! <laughs> well, I don't know. gestures <laughs> at the guy. <laughs> Kira's gonna head over to this cultist and, like, see if there's anything on him that maybe clues or just anything at all nah it was it's he's literally just like with robes and he had his dagger that that was <laughs> do you no, his boots nice said, does he have nice boots did i when i said Dude. keep one alive this is what i meant like this guy <laughs> is who i meant to keep alive like drake's i don't speak drake now could i learn to speak drake yes i could but it take a lot of time and that's a lot of magic i don't want to use right now there anything on this cultist? No, it's just his robe, his boots, and his neck. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Then I'm gonna just like look around the room, see if there's anything. Um as you're exploring the room, you do see like these runes written here on this wall. And once again, they are in draconic. Goody. Uh, does um, and does anyone need healing? I could use a little. How much did you get hit for? Um, <laughs> let me see. I've On a got... scale of one to max health, how do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing okay, so I don't need a lot of healing. Like five, ten HP. Yeah, about. They didn't touch me. I'm gonna do lay on hands, and I want to give you ten HP. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, Baritone is going to kind of start inspecting the room, like inspecting the doors and like starting with the big stone door and okay. then the two smaller doors. Bumper. I hear a bumper. Um, as your your investigation or what are you looking for again? I'm sorry, I'm uh, I'm just general, just some general information because I know you said there's some runes on the wall, but like as far as like if the doors are locked, traps, that sort of shit. Okay, yeah, then definitely roll for investigation, please. Okay, fuck. I don't leave the paper with my shit. The investigation is gonna be too hot. Uh, that's a 13. Um, you don't see any traps. Um, as you're kind of exploring, uh, the, the walls, there's the draconic runes on the right-hand side of the door. But, yep. But you also notice, um, some script on the left-hand side of the door. Okay. This is in common. What does the script say? You're Rest reading it. <laughs> Whose dog is that? <laughs> That's Liv. So if you want to just mute her, so that way. I don't know if I can. Can I? Mute you should her? be able to mute her. Yes. As okay. a yeah. There you go. Right. Okay. So um. You just have to unmute her when she comes back. You're reading the <clears throat> script, and it it reads, "I have many tongues, but cannot taste. By me, most things are turned to waste." I crack and snap 
yet I stay whole, I may take the largest toll. I assisted all of the first men, and I will pay them back again. Around me, people snuggle and sleep, yet run when I am released from my keep. I jump around and leap and bound. The cold man wishes I he be found. Fire! Balin just says that out loud, if he's, if he's saying it out loud. Well, are you reading well, the script? Baritone's reading it quietly. Like, he's reading it in his head because he knows oh. reading things. Being a person of magic, he knows that, like, hey, reading random shit you find out loud <laughs> can kind of be a problem. Uh, so he kind of reads it, and he's just like... Valen's, like, right behind you, kind of, like, looking over your shoulder. <laughs> He, uh, as he feels you over his shoulder, he is going to kind of poke. He's going to like slide his dagger and kind of put it right in your stomach. Like very much like putting, like pressing it against your stomach. Step. I would appreciate a little bit of space. Thank you. <laughs> takes, takes one, one good step back. <laughs> Just message received. <laughs> and then <laughs> slides the dagger back. Could Baritone win that fight? Absolutely fucking not. But <laughs> Valen doesn't, doesn't know that. Know that. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact: Dimension Door. Yay! <laughs> Confidence. Yeah, is but Valen is reading it as well. Um, it it sounds like a riddle. Yeah. If I was to take a guess, it sounds like fire. That's what I. That's what I agree. But the question is: Does that mean we set fire to the door and it opens it? Or does that mean that there's going to be fire inside? Hmm. Is there any, like, sconces or anything sitting on this door? Like, anything that could be ignited? Mm, No. I pull out my torch from my pack, light it, press the digitation, kind of hold. hold, hold, hold. hold. (laughs) Baritone immediately looks at her. We've talked about this. We've oh. talked about this. What? I, I'm not the one. I'm not the one I'm about eager. to it. I'm not I looking at Valen. I'm looking at. I'm looking at Gira. I get ahead of myself. Okay. <laughs> she's hold, She's he, just holding it. Then he he literally is just like, and it goes out like. We fuck. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> not now. <laughs> oh, love you. But Don't planning is boring. <sighs> <laughs> what names have you came up for the bar yeah and uh he's gonna <laughs> check the doors he's like let's check these first before we start trying to push through the big stone one uh so he's gonna walk over to this door and uh kind of give it a little check yeah. so i already checked Wrong. it like kind of initially for a trap but i guess i'm now just kind of like checking to see if it's locked uh it is it is locked uh Valen's gonna check this door it's unlocked I don't open it, but I do look at the other and say, "This one, like, I, this one's unlocked." I do not have any thieves' tools. Kind of glancing over, he glances over his shoulder at uh, Kira. Do you got any? You got anything for this? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. All right. Kind of takes his dagger out. Uh, yeah, if you want to check, I mean, he kind of glances over his shoulder at you two. Yeah, if, or at uh, Valen and uh, Karia. Yeah, if you guys want to check that door, just if there's people, keep one alive. Gotcha. <laughs> you sent the barbarian and, then... and the paladin in the room. <laughs> Smack it with the blunt side of your blade, bud. <laughs> And the axe. I was going to say, broad but... side of the axe. <laughs> the worst part is, Balin points at the first dude he killed where he killed him with the pommel. <laughs> Just, mm. As this is happening, Baritone's going to be, yeah, Baritone's going to essentially be using the dagger to kind of like essentially slide it, kind of like yep, the credit card the trick. Yeah, like that's Roll essentially me... what he's doing. So. Roll me a slide of hand at disadvantage. Okay. I will not try to inspire myself because as funny as that would be. I'm Actually, inspired. no, Thieves Tools gives you advantage, right? If you I, had I don't have Thieves Tools. I, I know, I'm but using... I'm just asking in general. Like, if you have proficiency uh, if I, with... 
with thieves tools. Yeah, you have would, these tools. You yeah, would, would get give to you add your proficiency with it. Oh, okay. So you'd be able to add your proficiency modifier with, well, depending on how the DM wants to rule it, but like it would be a sleight of hand and then you'd be able to add your proficiency mm -hmm. on top got of it, well Got it, got it, got it. Um, Okay, oh. then yeah, at disadvantage, because I just see like this a, a dagger just being very not yeah. like a credit card. It's they can, very... They can be pretty yeah. thick. Especially yeah, if it's one meant for it's, combat. But it's, but it's wood, you know? It's, it's you know, real soft. I mean, worst comes real to worst, soft, real, 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 it's made out. out of pine. Well, you guys are doing you. Baritone's gonna try this first. Mine's unlocked. I'm a master locksmith. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What'd you get there, Baritone? Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a nat 20. With disadvantage? And a four. Oh, okay. Well, roll the four <laughs> for a total of eight. That's why I was like, okay. Sure. Yep, so, uh, you're trying to it wiggle this, like... this dagger, like, between, like, you know, the locking mechanism of the knob with the, the frame, and you're just, like, trying, and you actually managed to, like, break the frame of the, of the door a bit. Yeah, like, it's just... After a little bit, Baritone's just gonna like pull the dagger out. Like, where's <sighs> the one time I leave my tools at home? That's what, that's what I get. That's what I get. He kind of like wipes the dagger off, kind of like checking it to make sure it's not too damaged, and slides it back into his sleeve. I mean, unless you get something that'll kind of not be able to pop this thing. I imagine we're talking as they're going into yeah. the other room. Yep. So, so uh, Valen's well, gonna very like gently turn the knob, crack it just to try and see inside first. Um, so you open the door slightly. He's attempting to be sneaky. <laughs> I mean, roll me a stealth not, not, check. Not, not his forte, but... Roll me a stealth. Uh, that will be... You'd be surprised. A 14. So you... kind you You open the door and you take a step... And your armor kind of makes a noise as you step. Just freeze. You free. you're, you're listening. You don't hear anything. Start and you, a little more. And you open the door. And you see a well-lit room and multiple beds. Um, looks like uh, this is where uh, the cultists kind of sleep. But there's no one in the room. All right, so yeah, so this is where they sleep. Um, I guess potentially look for keys, anything like that. Um, Start investigating the room. Roll me investigation. Rory is gonna look too. So are you helping Valen, or are you just you're looking off somewhere else? She's helping. Okay, so oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Valen, my dear, you are, um, you know... Just, like, opening chests. I'm looking... <laughs> I'm pulling you... a Skyrim. I'm looting the room, just looking around, like, is there anything useful here? Robes, robes, knives, boots, robes. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Like, you're opening these chests, you see robes, boots, knives, daggers, you're... No. Open the next chest. No. You are looking... At the... There's nothing of use in these chests. But I'm assuming I also see those two doors. Yes, you do. Um, I'm going to come back and report that I couldn't find any keys and whatnot, but there are two more doors over here. Okay. And we didn't kill anyone. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yet. <laughs> um. <clears throat> He's struggling with this door. Like, hmm. Yeah, Valen, you see his baritone's kind of still, like, trying to figure out a way to open this door that he's standing in front of. Um, but besides that, uh, I'll have you make a deck save for me. With disadvantage. Everyone? Not that I need disadvantage. All of y'all. I'm definitely not falling. Hand. <laughs> That's a seven. That's a, a seven for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Baritone, roll a deck save with disadvantage! <laughs> no. 
Deck save. Disadvantage. Mm -hmm. You Disadvantage. do. You, you guys do have a plus three. Don't forget. <laughs> oh, thirteen. Hmm. Uh, plus three, uh, so that'll be, uh, 18. Uh, you suddenly hear as another violent earthquake starts shaking, uh, this, uh, area that you're in. Um, you see dust kind of falling from the ceiling, um, and Karya, uh, Kira, and Valen, you all fall on your asses, and as Baritone's able to keep his footing. Baritone just stares. <laughs> Guys. Kara, you good? Yeah. <sighs> she picks herself up. Yeah, I'm good. You fall down again? Yeah. No. <laughs> Inside check. <laughs> Versus deception? Mm hmm. <laughs> oh. 15. I rolled an 18 for a total of uh, 21. Yeah, you I can tell. I have a plus 18 like... deception, too. <laughs> he's like, Baritone just, just stops, and he's just like, he's like, yeah, no! Baritone's like, oh. now if you're going to lie to me, you should do better than that. And then, uh, okay, so what, what happened? I'm sorry. Uh, away. So Valen and uh, Karia went into the room. They didn't find anything. Um, and they came back to report in on what they found. Okay. Baritone's going to step out of the way and kind of let the two bruisers. Any of you know a way to pick a lock? No, but I can chop a door down. <laughs> I'm going to go to these doors and like Checking for kind of like traps and stuff along the way, just doing a real thorough check before. Yeah, we couldn't okay. find any keys in the bedrooms either. Roll investigation, Kira. Baritone's stepping out of the way of the door for the two. 20. No, Valen is getting out of the way too. You don't like, see nope. any traps? Okay. I'm going to check the door to see if it's locked. I'm not going to open it, just. Which door? This one that I'm next to. Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah, no, it's not locked. Oh, that one. Okay. Then I'm going to do the same thing up here. Not locked. Okay, no traps, I'm guessing. No. Okay. <clears throat> you guys, both these doors in this next room are unlocked as well. So before we go chop before we go chopping this one down, do we want to investigate those doors cuz the chopping will cause a lot of noise. Baritone moves up front, checks the top door. Okay. I'll follow right behind. Are you just opening the door, or are you trying to be stealthful about it? Stealthing. Okay, roll me a stealth check. That will be a uh, 16. So, yep, you're pretty sneaky. You kind of open the door, and you see it's just a storage room. <laughs> Do a quick glance and then I I kind of like pop my head in to do a look and it's just kind of like leaves the door open and then starts heading down to the other door. Storage okay. room. You might, you here, might find here, something of use. Kira's going to go in and kind of being careful checking around for anything. Nope. You just see it. That's just a bunch of dried fruits, uh, leathers you see um bottle like these barrels of ale in there as well just it's just a storage room and you're opening this door correct Stealthy these again. barrels of ale do they have uh like are they tapped yeah she's gonna pull out one of her little <laughs> cups real quick <laughs> take a little sample okay uh stealth for the door uh, there's a 23 on that one. Okay. Um, I need you and Valen to make a con save, please. Oh. <laughs> you have a plus three. I what got a nat 20. Door being, <laughs> what happened to that door being safe, my dear? Why you lie? I didn't lie. No, I didn't say you. I didn't say you. 
<laughs> we, we, were, we were told by the by the door checker that the door is safe. That's I, that's what I'm talking about. I don't believe about. I ever said that it was safe. <laughs> I said it was unlocked. <laughs> that was her words. So nothing happened when check she checked it. It was locked. <laughs> check the tapes. Uh, no, check she didn't say that. Uh, you said it's plus three as well. Uh, so yeah. that's going to be a 17 on the console. Yeah. I crit. So. so you open this door and this noxious smell comes oh. out of this room. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like utter shit. Uh, it's the bathroom. bathroom. Valen <laughs> uh, just grabs the door handle and slams it shut like, mm. Kira not knowing what's happening is like, she's chugged <laughs> one of these already and she's filling up two cups now and walks out into the other room. <laughs> um, Baritone's gonna see her. <laughs> She's gonna look at Baritone, eh? and hold up one of the, the cups. It's pretty good. He he takes it. <laughs> he's taking. He's like. He's like. At first, he's mad. He's just like. Man, at least she was nice. At least she was smart enough to give me one too. <laughs> and then she kind of holds it up to to, like, kind of cheers. Blink. And then chugs it down. Okay. Baritone's gonna sip it as he walks back to the other door. Kari, you All wanna right. remove the door? All right. So Kari is gonna go over to the door, and she's gonna swing at it with her axe. <laughs> Athletics, oh, please. Work. Yeah, Bar Baritone is Baritone's taking his time. He's like, well, this is gonna be a thing. <laughs> Fallen is like trying not to throw up. <laughs> That's a 26. Kara, you take your axe and you just wail on this door and it like <sighs> explodes into splinters. Here's <gasps> Kara. <laughs> Imagine the SpongeBob thing with the with the marble and just tink. <laughs> yeah, more or less. Kara has created an intricate statue out of wood. <laughs> I was just thinking the shining. If you poke yeah. your head through. Oh god. Hi. Hello there. I'm Elmo. <laughs> so you all uh, you, see, Elmo? you see Kario obliterate this door and it's open. Kario's gonna go in. Look... Oh, okay, hang on. This yeah, this looks more important. Uh Baritone, Baritone I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this carpet. Or no no, first I'm gonna look under the bed. There's nothing under the bed. That's what I hide no all of my stuff. No chupacabra? No, no chupacabra. No chupacabra. Ah, check this thing right here. That's a callback to a different show. <laughs> um, You're checking the chest, uh, Kira? Yeah. Uh, You open it, and there's just a bunch of elaborate-looking robes in the chest. Like it's just, up just elaborate things. or like so I, they're notice, they're like, very fine looking robes. They fancy. have um very like intricate uh like details on the robe. It looks like um probably cult leader ish esque vibe to it. <laughs> She's gonna like pull one out and like hold it up and turn around to Baritone. What do you think? Do I have Cult leader aesthetic. Does that work? Honestly, with you, not a bad look. Especially with the whole shadow act. We could make that work. She, like, uh, tucks it into her bag. And in here, that might actually not be a bad idea. Ooh, I like your thinking. I, I look at it for a second, and then I snap my fingers, and my suit turns into that robe. <laughs> oh yeah and there wasn't anything else in there just the robes yeah it was just the robes oh jeez maybe just like That's a few cords life. to tie the robes That's with you know <laughs> fallen Karia, yeah. what are you doing searching over here um Ooh, you open up like the it. drawers and just everyday clothes there's even like a couple fragrances like on the on top of the dresser and brush. 
Blech. Lilac and gooseberry. Nice. What is this? Colin, you see a door. I, I try the handle. It's locked. Oh. Hmm. Kari, you want to try your uh, lock picking <laughs> skills again? Resident door cracker. <laughs> okay. We're going to swing at the door again. Roll me athletics. How, how do you want to obliterate this door? Because uh... <laughs> she I can just... see Karya getting better at it and cutting <laughs> just around the door handle, so the rest just swings open like normal. Yep. She's just gonna attack at the um, the joints of the door to knock the joints off the door. She just yells at it to move. And it just. <sighs> okay. Uh, yep, you. Open up the door and uh, you look in, and it looks like <gasps> a lab. <gasps> Volin see shiny. <laughs> Volin, you see a whole bunch of differently colored potions, some kind of illuminating a bit. Um, a green potion that's kind of like got this like green necrotic smoky-esque aurora Whoa. coming off of it baritone mm. sees them walk into a different room from the big one and then immediately is like oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, walks in sees valen is like leaning over the table looking at stuff not Back touching away from the table oh, i'm baritone? gonna the examine table. like yes yes hey baritone as you walk yes. into this room you sense something's off oh the atmosphere in the room is just different. I look at Kira. Let me to the moon. You uh it comes back over here. Let's uh let's back up. Something's off. And Can I is... like look around? Real intently. Is it like dim lit or? Um, so this area is. Uh, so right over here is nicely lit, but as you get into like over here, it's kind of darkly lit. You barely see. What about dark vision? Fallen, yeah. you see some. I have dark vision as well. So. Oh, okay. Well, both of you see what appears to be. A jail cell. Oh. So she's going to relay. There's a there's cell doors over there in the corner. She's going to point it out. Um, Maritone's okay. going to pull. Fallen, what you candles. doing? Uh, I think I want to stand like on the opposite side of the wall and like go and like try and see what's in the jail cell. Fallen. Maritone's going to. Oh, shit. No shit. As you're looking inside this jail cell, you kind of see something move in the shadows. Oh. You hear like this very forced breathing, like <gasps> as this you see wings kind of open up. Oh. Oh. And you oh. see something stand on all fours and it's looking right at you with these dark green eyes and this is what you see what do I see ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! no <laughs> Valen, you see as this freaking <laughs> monstrosity of a creature Stands up on all fours. It's breathing heavy. You like, see, like its hair, like, like nope, covering nope, its nope, face, nope. and it lets out this shrieking roar of a mix between beast and man. You all hear this. <laughs> Aritone 
is going to switch his clothes <laughs> back to his normal clothes before this thing sees him. So wait, is this thing attacking? Am I running? What, what's going it's on? It's in the cave. I don't know what you're doing. But yeah. It looked like you booked it out of there. Like you screamed I mean, and ran. Look, he, like he would look at this. This is genuinely upsetting to look at. I mean, it's like half dragon, half <laughs> human, half <laughs> extra. Alvin! Make a deck save for me, please. I knew it. Come on. Uh, 17. This monstrosity is now on all fours. And it kind of gets up on its hind legs, and you see its monstrous arm, paw, things, and it slams itself against the bars. The bars immediately fall off the walls, and this you see the freaking gate flying at you. You quickly react. You jump out of the way as this thing slams yeah. into the wall. And you all see as this creature Can I do something to react? Out. I would like to do something really quickly. Uh, so yeah, I, I want to do something too. Fallen? Baritone. Fallen, okay. you're up. I see a uh, uh, smoky green necrotic liquid thing. I'm going to grab that and throw it at it. God! Mm. <laughs> <laughs> God! Mm, I love it. Love the RP. Action here. <laughs> no, this is no longer this. This is now Dr. Cox. I am now in Dr. Cox mode. I am in the... I'll roll. That's an 18 on the dice. <laughs> you see as this um this potion hits this thing. And it grows bigger. <laughs> Is it too big for the door now? Oh no, it made it out before yeah. you uh... No no no, like the door to get out of this room. Oh yes, it is yeah, it Run. is huge. <laughs> running, running, running. It is a huge monster right now. <laughs> Aria's freaking heading for the door. Yeah. <sighs> nope, 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 nope. <laughs> what are uh Kira and Baritone God doing? Damn it, Valor. <laughs> I did what makes sense. It's in the crowd. As, as she runs, as she runs by Baritone, she's like, "Time to boogie, sweetheart. Let's go." <laughs> Baritone looks at this thing, and can I get like an insight check on this, uh, if possible, on this thing before I do what I want to do? What do you want to know about it specifically? I'm I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to gauge its general. I guess its general mood right now, of whether or not it is wanting to kill us or wanting to just like or if it's just like scared and like oh there's shit around i need to defend myself kind of thing yeah roll me an insight check okay yeah i'm not like what is it weak to like i'm not trying to <laughs> okay okay um that is going to be a 22 Got a fucking 19 on the die. I'm not going to lie to you. I got real sad. I was like, 20! Ah, nope. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you're looking at this thing, and it kind of like, it's like swaying a bit, and it sees you, Baritone, and judging by its body, posture, it's body language, it's hungry. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast tongues on myself. Okay. Um, which oh. allows me the ability to um, mm -hmm. when I speak any creature that uh, knows at least one language and can hear the target understands what I'm saying. And I will be able to understand anything that it is saying. Cool. Okay, so what are you going to try to say to this thing? I'm going to say, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> There's food outside. <laughs> we can, don't, we can help you. 
We can help you here. Don't attack us. We can feed you. I can feed you. I'm like move, I'm like gesturing at Valen to get the fuck out of the room, considering you just threw something at it. Don't tell me twice. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like kind of moving by, towards I'm, I'm going to stay by the doorway in case you need assistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just more of like wanting you to get out of the immediate like. I I, said, I start to say we and then say I. I can help you. I can get you out of here, and I can feed you, or I can feed you. I, I say feed you. It's like I can get you some food, and I can figure out how to get you out of here. Okay. See as it slowly starts walking towards you, its, it's head kind of twitching a little bit as it keeps walking towards you. Roll me a per, uh, persuasion check. Okay. Uh, that is a uh, natural 20 for a 31. Oh, yes. This thing is walking. It the salt. <laughs> is walking towards you. It kind of stumbles a bit. It's still kind of twitching a little. Um, and then it gets to about five feet from you. I need you to make a con save. Okay. If I smell real bad. <laughs> Um, he is outside of 10 feet. What, what's your aura range? Is that 10 feet? Yes. Okay, so I'm outside of his aura range. Con saves, that is a 17 on the con save. Okay. Um, as this thing is getting closer to you, you notice a very foul stench coming off of this thing. Um, you kind of hold your breath as it gets closer, and it gets to about five <clears throat> feet from you. And you see as it, like, moves its nose... And that way, it's just looking at you straight on. It does not speak, though. Do you understand me? Okay. Okay. Should we bring um, you one of the bodies? I'm going to get a cast, essentially, precipitation on myself to, like, help block the smell a little bit for me. Okay. <laughs> just essentially just cinnamon, because that's, like, what is in his brain right now, as far as <laughs> smell goes. Um, smell I'm then going to look... Cinnamon! Uh, actually, oh. no, not cinnamon. Not no, no, cinnamon, no, no, you said cinnamon! cinnamon. Not... You said yeah. cinnamon! Yes! You fool! Yes. You fool! Make it deck safe, motherfucker! Wait, wait, hang on. I've, I've been holding my action to help him. Can I, like, with the tip of the glaive, like, the hook on the backside, can I hook him and pull him back? Would you say... It's how you design the weapon. You know what it looks like. I know what Oops. it looks like. Stop, 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 stop. Hang on. In instantaneous, harmly, harmless sensory effect. Now, would the presentation affect him? I didn't target him with it. I was targeting myself with it. What were you trying to do with the presentation? You said you wanted to, to. You wanted to. I would. I'm trying to like get the smell of whatever the fuck this is out of my nose. And you I'm said not trying you, to cast you, it on him. No, but you cast it on yourself, making yourself smell like cinnamon. Correct. Mm -hmm. The scent of cinnamon is in the room. Yes. Make a deck okay. save. <laughs> can, can can me grabbing him with the hook of the glaive? Make a acrobatics. Fucking got this. Fucking got this. Um. Fifteen. Baritone, you cast I, resuscitation. I, I, I at least want to give him advantage or something. <laughs> you cast resuscitation. The scent of cinnamon starts coming off of you, and you see as the pupils in this thing's eyes shrink. It snarls, and it stands up on its hind legs, and it's about to come down on you, and you feel as something grabs you from behind and yanks you back through the door. 
as Valen pulls you into the room. Okay. <laughs> you get pulled in, and this thing is at the door, and you see its giant paw claw thing tearing at the ground and trying to reach you all, but cannot and get through. Immediately, immediately, like, calls it off, like, fuck! I had that. He's like, ah! Oh, damn it, read the room. I, I knew, I'm I pretty sure it's knew. time to go. <laughs> Valen, I'm gonna have words with you later. <laughs> what? It was don't, swinging at you. don't you fuck. Mm. Mm. <laughs> go cut off a piece of the, the one of those drakes you guys nearly you and Karia please go get me one of those drakes and one of the cultists Kira can you please help them yeah <clears throat> Kira's gonna go try to drag this like, cult I'm gonna chop it like just chop a tail off of the drake <laughs> And pull it back behind me. Um, Baritone is going to like cast it off himself, and he's going to keep trying to talk to this thing. Relax. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was not. I apologize. That was not cash money. <laughs> this thing keeps clawing at you, trying to reach you, snarling, shrieking in anger. All right, I'm gonna hopefully get back pretty. Soon, with this cultist body, I'm slowly dragging through the room. I'm just bringing a chunk of tail. Okay, Karya's so you have bringing... a drake tail, <clears throat> cultist body, and Karya, what are you dragging in? She's bringing the head that she chopped off. Okay, of and, a dra- drake. and a drake head. <laughs> uh, I'm going to cast Silent Image in the room behind it to make it look like a cultist is behind it. Okay. It has a range of 60 feet. So I'm trying to put a cultist essentially behind it over there. And I'm going to say, is did they put you here? And point, like trying to point behind him. You see as the creature immediately stops. Sees you pointing. And it turns. And it sees your image. And it lets out this, like, shrieking, horrible shriek. And it leaps at this silent image to try and, like, devour it. But it disappears. When and it- during this, I'm going to drag that body right into this doorway and then duck back as soon as... Yeah, like, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll drop the tail and, like, help you with the cultist body. Well, yeah, as I was going to say, like, the tail I'm going to keep off to the side. And then I'm just going to take the cultist body and, like, drag it into the room with me. I'm going to get right here in the door, and I'm going to hold the body and, like, off to the side and just be like, we killed them. We are not with them. We are here to try to help. And I kind of, like, toss it a little bit, like, kind of over here. I ain't got a whole lot of strength, so I can't, like, yeet that thing very far. Old man, old man strength. You, you threw see, something at it. I don't want you anywhere near this fucking thing right now. <laughs> you see as the wings kind of like spread out a bit and kind of shake before it kind of turns around and sees you, Baritone. Um, and it sees the body that you're carrying. Mm-hmm. And its eyes are locked on it. Okay. And I kind of like toss it off to the side a little bit. And you immediately and see it. a flash of green go towards this body and start tearing it to pieces. Okay. 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 I'm gonna go start grabbing another box. <laughs> get me another. Get me another cultist. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna take the Drake tail, and I'm gonna drag like that one full body, and then I'm gonna throw that kind of over here by the table to see if it goes for that. To see if this thing's eating anything or if it's only trying to eat the cultist. Okay. I don't know if Queen um, planned for as... this at all, but here we are. You. <laughs> You throw the tail, and it makes a loud thud on the ground, and you hear as the beast suddenly stops hearing this, hearing the noise, and it kind of, like, slowly turns, and it sees this tail, and it lunges at it and starts tearing it to pieces. 
Okay. Does it still look like looking at it? Is it still looking like real hungry after eating those two things? Oh yeah. Okay. Get more. <laughs> yeah, I should. Be I, I look at it. Another one. I can body. get. I can get you more, but I need you to please calm down. Persuasion. I'm gonna be able to do better than the nat twenty. Give me a nineteen. Not a nineteen, but uh, that is going to be a twenty-three. Um, as you're talking to this thing, you see as it's kind of like keeping an eye on you as it's like gnawing on this tail. It's not trying to attack you. It's mm -hmm. it is aware of your presence. Baritone is kind of relaxing his posture a bit. He's less doing this. And he's kind of now like leaning against the door. Just being like, all right. Seeing it like not necessarily like full on, like still keeping an eye, but watch it. Like it's, I, I'm, I'm assuming I'm noticing a change in its demeanor from like, I'm going to attack you to like, I'm going to yes. eat this, but I'm not trusting you at all. Okay. Yes. Um, As you're looking at this thing, Baritone, now that it's in the light and it's not mm -hmm. flailing around trying to kill you, you notice that there are patches of like human skin almost on it, on parts of its body. <laughs> and you see like the locks of hair on its head and the hands almost have like finger-esque appendages on it. Oh god, it's got toes. <laughs> what did it what did it what did they do to you? Do you remember who you were? It just who you are. just keeps looking at you. Okay. Don't wanna talk. It's fine. You still hungry? You hear this deep growl and deep coming from deep within its throat. Baritone kinda of smash flashes a smile. Alright. We can get you some more. Okay. Got another one. Out <laughs> Just, I need you. I'm going to drag it in. I promise you I'm not going to hurt you. I will leave the two bodies out here. Right outside the door. You're, you're, you're Vol talking Vol to this at this thing. point is going to go and just grab grab anything you can carry. That looks it's like, like anything that is meat related. <laughs> <laughs> Like at this point, he's grabbed another one of the drakes, like just was grabbing by the leg and pulling the whole body. Just <laughs> where is Gavin? <laughs> Here is gonna signal for Kari to help her, and she's gonna grab like the the blanket off this bed and come in here and try to pile shit on the blanket. And we're just gonna drag <laughs> the whole fucking thing. This has turned into the weirdest case of like Animal Planet. Animal no Planet. kidding. <laughs> Hey, you guys, look, do you want to fight this? Because I don't. I don't want to fight it. I don't want to fight it. Point out, it cannot fit through the door right now. I'm, mm, let me RP this. <laughs> let me RP this. Okay? That's why I haven't this could stopped be, yet. This, you, mm, fuck it. <laughs> eh. <laughs> hey, it tried to attack you. I, no, it tried to get out of a cell. I can't even get mad at that. I, that is... <laughs> no, it, it tried to attack you. Oh, yeah, that was because I fucked that up. Yeah, I fucked that up. Yeah, that's that. I was just saving you from that. <laughs> I was like, why is my brain? I was like, cinnamon. Should have went li like lilac and gooseberries would have been a bad answer, too. <laughs> <laughs> lilac and gooseberries. <laughs> yeah. To be, right, to be quite right. honest with you, probably not. It's just the, the uh, cinnamon. <laughs> yeah. Right, so we got as all soon, the as, as soon as now we know that like cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> or the, you know, the fucking monk thing. Like, mm. anyway, that's better gaming. Sorry. Um, so I kind of, I'll be right back. I'm going to grab some more food, okay? Okay. And he kind of get, and I baritone kind of like cross his arms and he kind of steps through the door because this door is like shattered, right? Baritone, as you're kind of yes. walking back, you see it kind of twitch a little bit and it starts getting up on all fours. It's body mm -hmm. posture now. Like it wants to kill you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not close enough to hook you. Nope, nope. Well, baritone is okay. What do you want to do? No, I'm still stepping out the door. Hey, hey, hey. 
getting trying to help you. I can help you. You but see, you as have to trust me. And it, it takes a step closer, and it kind of twitches again. Mm-hmm. And you see as it relaxes. Would this be about the time we would drag that horse. blanket back in there? <laughs> Baritone's taking one more step, and he grabs, I assume, the cultist, because I think that was, like, the next thing. Is yeah, this the one that's in half, or is this, like, two, one that's without both the... Both of them are there. Okay, I'm grabbing the rubbery jaw one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to grab it. I'm going to look at it. Yeah, rubber neck. Uh, I'm grabbing it, and I'm looking at him, or uh, looking at the creature. Like, let me get it in the door. Can you back up? Please. You see as it takes a couple steps back. I drag the cultist in, and once again, I kind of step in, and then I toss the body, like, two hand off to the side, kind of, like, over here. And as soon as you toss the body, it leaps at it and starts tearing it to pieces. (laughs) Okay, so can I, is there, can, can I tell this thing, if this was a woman or a man prior to you can't tell okay all right i'm gonna while it's eating i'm going to move and grab half of the other cultist (laughs) and i'm just i'm waiting for all of you to just run out of snacks for this thing (laughs) yeah that's what i'm saying what happens when we run out of food (laughs) toss it over here as well. Like, just trying to kind of get it to ping back and forth between those two spots. So, like, I kind of toss it over there while it's still eating the other cultist. You toss it, but it's so involved, like, focused on this mm-hmm. body, it, it doesn't even hear it. Okay. Do you want our help? It stops. And it kind of, like, turns and looks at you. Kind of tilting its head a bit with a little twitch. Okay. I don't know if we can undo what they did but we can try but you have to trust us trust me Baritone you see the creatures start to twitch he kind of just stares at it he's not going for his weapons because he knows that's not going to do fuck all Hey. I don't like them any more than you do. I can help you. Any... Yeah. Am I, should I be continuously rolling persuasion checks here, or are we just are you just um, waiting for me to fail one of these? No, actually. Um, it's been making will saves actually. Oh. You see. As its eyes get dilated again, smaller, and it gets up on all fours, you see its lips kind of curl back as you see these jagged teeth, this noxious green smoke come out of its mouth as it's stepping towards you, stalking Mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? I look at it, and I kind of see it trying to kind of move at me, and 
I will say one last time, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do this? Make a deck save. Okay. Uh, that is a nine. That's kind of funny because it got a nine on its will save. You see as it immediately roars and leaps at you. It tackles you to the ground and you are now pinned under this massive dragon human paw, more or less. Mm -hmm. And you are pinned there for a second. Choo choo! I'm guessing we casting, this. casting, I yell at you guys to wait and I cast major image on the wall, uh, on the far wall over here. Okay. And I make another chimera creature exactly the same over there. You see as this creature sees this flash and it looks and it sees this other other form another one of it and it snarls you see its tail flicking back and forth its wings kind of like pulled back close to its body and its back kind of arching it doesn't look happy that there's another one of those things with it <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's still keeping you pinned there um, so this thing is going to kind of do a roar, kind of like making a noise, like making that same kind of like guttural noises that it was making. And mm -hmm. it, like, it is mirroring this thing. I want this thing to mirror exactly what it is doing. Like tail swishing thing back. Okay. You see Green. as... The, the the body of this thing on you is tensing up and you see as this thing just leaps off of you and towards this major image to attack it baritone is going to take that opportunity to immediately get the like grab the wall i'm imagining because i'm like i imagine i'm kind of near the door frame mm -hmm. grabbing that and immediately just being like Foom! like getting the fuck in that room Slam the door. Um, yeah, there is no door. There is no, <laughs> yeah, there's no door there. But as All soon right. as that image, as soon as it goes at that image, that image is going to disappear. Okay, so, so what I wanted to be doing is like <sighs> remembering what's on that table. <sighs> that I was next to it, looking at it. I want to see if there's anything that I would recognize that might help in this situation. What table? The table that the creatures in? Yeah, this one right here. <sighs> Like, um, just, just from here, because I looked at the table before all of this happened. Right, um, and I didn't... I, I kind of described a little bit, but I didn't describe in the entirety of it. You described, like, the one potion that I elected to throw the thing? Yep. Um, Kira, roll me a history check. With advantage. Baritones is going to be, like, kind of... Advantage? No, ad advantage. Is... Advantage. Yeah. So oh, it's I a 21. Okay. Um, Kira, you remember as you were looking at this table, there were a pile of papers um, on this table. Um, there was a name, um, age. It was a description of somebody. Um, but that was kind of what you could make out of it before everything kind of just went to shit. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to kind of do the same thing I did with the cultists and where it just leapt to. I'm going to put a big, like, draconic rune up there again and see if that kind of holds its attention. So, uh, you, you cast Crucicitation, um, you make that rune appear and you see, um, it, it it sees the light from the rune and its its eyes are on it now. Okay. And then I'm gonna try to stealth into the room and like quickly and quietly grab as much stuff that I think 
would help figure out what we can do okay. and then try to duck back out. Okay. And you're you're wearing the cloak, correct? Yes. That means you have advantage on stealth, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Go ahead and roll me uh, two stealth checks. Okay. One going to the table, Ooh. one leaving the table. And a slight. Oh, come hit. on. All right. That's an eight to get there. That's what, not good. With advantage? Yeah. And then a 14 to get out. And then the sleight of hand. You still, with the, oh. with the bardic, ins bardic inspiration's gone at this point, right? Mm -hmm. um, and okay, the so... sleight of hand is a one for a, for three a total. total. Of... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Kira. My dear. Oh no. My darling. Rogue you are, a rogue you are not. <laughs> you walk up to this table and you kind of nick the corner of the table with your foot, like the leg of the table, and you freeze immediately as this thing kind of like twitches a bit. But it's still focused on the rune. In a panic, you start trying to grab as much shit as you can off this table. And then, for the second check, you rolled a 14, right? Yes. You grab as much shit as you can. You, like, you, you don't even look. You just grab, and you turn, and you get the fuck out. <laughs> okay. <sighs> and then, <clears throat> once I get kind of back, I'm going to probably do it on this, like, rogue thing here. Spread out the shit and start, like, looking through it to see so what I so we have two full drakes one without a tail and then we have half a cultist left over here right food wise mm -hmm. plus a half cultist in there that hasn't been eaten yet <laughs> yeah we are running out of food <laughs> baritone's <sighs> like looking at the suit with the claw marks now and he's kind of like holding his chest a little bit like oh fuck that thing was heavy kira's gonna go oh bear i got a i got an idea you remember the smell that you put on yourself? Yeah. Put it on that, that wall. Mistake. Cinnamon? I'm trying not to get it. It's I'm trying not to That's get true. it wild up. That's true. What's what's the opposite okay. of cinnamon? Mint? Mojito? <laughs> Lavender? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to like calm this thing down. I don't wanna I I wanna try to put it to sleep, but I also realize that, that this thing is far too large for that. Kira, okay. as you kind of have, like, the uh, papers, and you, you grab, like, a couple of empty, like, glass vials and stuff like that as well. Um, but you kind of, like, spread the papers out, and you grab the paper that you saw before. You see um, a, a name on this piece of paper. Amelia. Age 24. Human. Height 5 foot 4. Weight 100 and five pounds Baritone, um, look at this and you see just like these tallies of these notes on the other side of this paper that this information's on her name um, I think her name was Amelia and I'll show him the paper I'll come over here Baritone who's been pretty calm and cool like I said, cool as a cucumber, you know, talking to the big creepy dragon thing, keeping his shit, keeping his shit together. Balan is just watching the lack of a door. <laughs> he's, he's sees that it was a person that this thing was like, he thought it might've been, but it was like, might've been some weird, like they tried to fuck around with something, but like, this was Amelia. Looks at Kira. I want these fuckers dead. Like head mounted on my wall, kind of fucking dead. I'm with you. I'm over this shit. <clears throat> People who make their wealth off the fortune and misfortune of others are fucking parasites, and I'm over this shit. 
What else? Is there anything else in here other than her name? Uh, this is just kind of her profile. Um, they documented everything, her height, weight, age, all that. <clears throat> then I'm going to hand him the paper and then go back to sifting, see if there's anything else of note in all of that. Um, you're flipping through and there are more of these profiles. But with these, they're, they say, um, expired. On the sheet I have, is there any things as far as like, um, not characteristics, but as far as like, um, foods, hobbies, stuff like that? No, it's just basic profile. I was thinking like, date, yeah, I was like dating profile or just like a straight up. But it like, would have said like, swipe right. where she was from or where they picked her up from or anything. Okay. Nope. Gonna... As she's going through the rest of these, Baritone, she's How? not the first. They've been trying to do this for a while. She's there the was last. at least eight other people that they tried this with that didn't make it. Kind of spits. Which gear, you know, is like, that's very on him. He is normally very, like, suave put together, and he's like, just spits, like, just a bad taste out of his mouth. Uh, she's the last. Kira, you also noticed that based off of, like, the test notes that these people put. Amelia's the only one that has gotten this far into this transformation. Right. I kind of assumed that with all the other ones that expired. <laughs> so they're trying to turn people into dragons. It Something appears, like that. or some abomination in between. Uh, is there any like potions or anything that I think might help counter it or you've anything never like seen anything like this anything this in the is, notes um, that I might be able to figure this out seems less this magical some... and more alchemical yeah some um no nah, there's dark god shit all right how long does that first dissertation last for up to an hour Okay. Um, pretty sure. Baritone's gonna take that sheet. Yeah. Duration one hour. And he's going to look at you guys and like, whatever you do, don't attack her. Well, should we check out that big stone door again? Yeah. Fair. See if you can figure out how to exactly open it. What needs to be lit on fire? Fire is what we got, but you guys can try to sort that as I try to. Yeah, sort out. I'll try and help. Way. I'll try and help, like bring in the rest of this. Like, we'll keep it by the yeah, keep it near the corpses. Door, so yeah. Nearby, yeah. yeah. Shot. Can you cut up the drink? <laughs> can what do you cut up the dragon? The drinks, so I can like. And like he looks at the drink. He looks at the drink. He's like, I, I, I'm not gonna be able to drag that in there. <laughs> that's, I'll, I'll, that's I'll, heavy work on, shit. I'll, I'll work on the door. Um. I'll go up there. Uh, I would ask uh, Kyra for uh, that torch. <clears throat> Kira would pull it out, hand it to him. You want it lit? Uh, yes. And she'll just. Uh, he's going to go over to the stone door. Um, first thing he's going to do, he's going to touch the torch to the door. Fallen, as you put the torch to the door, you see as these fiery looking runes just start spreading out across this door, lighting up this door entirely, and then the door shakes and it slides down, opening the door. Yeah, he's gonna take like a step, he like, with a torch, he's gonna keep the glaive in the other hand, like step back just to make sure nothing's gonna come out. Nothing comes out? Although you can hear a faint chanting. Oh. The I kind of like look back towards the door where they are. Just there's more in there. Oh, it sounds like a lot. They're chanting. And Curry is gonna look to them. Did you hear Valen? Baritone nods. 
give me a few minutes. You guys get ready to move. All right. And in that case, I'll start. I'll start helping move the drakes over. Baritone's uh, gonna s- step in. Okay. Are you trying to be sneaky about it, or are you just walking in? Just walking in. It doesn't Kira's hear you. It's still s- focused on the rune. Stand behind him. He, Baritone, is going to make a ballsy move and kind of step a little bit more into the room. And he's you, going to... You take a step and like the heel of your boot kind of taps against the mm-hmm. stone floor. This dragon creature hears you. It immediately turns its green eyes glowing slightly as it's looking at you. I ha- I'm holding the paper. Amelia? Is that your name? And you see it kind of cock its head a bit. We can help you. We can try to help you. I'm so sorry for what they did. You see it start to twitch. Looking at its eyes, even my lo- I'm I'm locked eye contact mm-hmm. with this fucking thing. I'm like dialed in on this fucking thing. Once again, trying to go cool as a fucking cucumber. <laughs> Do I need to roll another persuasion, or is that like kind of out the door right now? That's out the door. I rolled a four for its will save. Um. You see as this thing is now starting to get faster walking towards you. I cast silent image ten feet to my left of Amelia. Is it like I was there an image of her on the on the paper or was it just a description? It was just a description. There's no I kind of to the amalgamation of what it based on that, I kind of silent image what I imagine would be her as far as like matching hair color, eye color, height, human. 10 feet to my left. It sees the image and it stops. And it's just looking at it. It's tail slowly kind of flicking back and forth. Was this you? You hear this low, almost sad grumble deep in its throat. We're not leaving you here. I'm going to move more food into here for you to eat. And then we're going to find who is responsible. You have my word. Baritone, you see Amelia start twitching again. Eyes dilated, eyes still the same. Oh, they're dilated. You hear this low growl escape from its mouth as it looks like it's ready to pounce. He just, he, bear tone, bear tone is like brow down. He like staring in the face. Like, I don't know if I need to make a deception check to see if I can like not look scared as shit. Yeah, roll a deception check. Kira's just ready to like try to slide (laughs) one of these bodies as fast as she can to like right here. At a moment's notice. 
that is a 25 on deception to yeah appear you are cool, <laughs> cool, cool as a fucking cucumber right now <laughs> once again behind like just stone face like looking at her meanwhile in his head just like don't fuck me. please god god this is not how i wanted to die old and in a fucking ah <laughs> Oh, I'm not dying in this fucking cave. I'm not dying in this cave. But God damn it. It's like, this could be my daughter. This could be my daughter. Well, not my daughter, but like, this is somebody's daughter. This is somebody's fucking daughter. Like, I'm not cool with this. Um. So I'm giving you one reaction before this thing attacks you. Okay. God, do I wish I had org right now. Or <laughs> org right now. Hug! <laughs> <laughs> Yeet that motherfucker um, off a cliff! <laughs> just just wrap, wrap this thing up in a, in a lovely headlock. To, um, I am going to cast creatures within 20 feet of a point. Did I fuck myself? No, I didn't. Okay. This thing's probably got a shitload of HP, but we're going to give it a shot. Baritone is just going to shake his head and just, I'm so sorry. And he's going to snap. And as he does, um, this gas starts filling up the area behind it. This like very kind of purple pink gas begins to fill the area around this thing within a 20-foot radius. I'm casting sleep at fourth level. Okay. Uh, so there is no saving throw for it. Uh, I need to roll... Well, it's a 5d8 to determine how many creatures will get hit. Um, wait. Do a magic slumber? Roll no, 5d8. Roll... To... Oh, wait. Yeah, sorry. I was thinking that that was yeah. for the... To you have to roll out. higher than the HP of your target to make it go to sleep. Oh, I'm. Oh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is 5d8 normally at first level, and then it's 2d8 for every level past second. So, so 68. 8, so 11d8. 11d8. I don't even know if that's going to be enough at max roll for it, but we are going to try nonetheless. With just the saddest fucking look. Like he went from like I'm like staring it down to just like a look of I'm so fucking sorry, and he's gonna cast it. Oh, there's ones there. Forty five. It's nowhere near enough. Oh. <laughs> so you see, as this purplish pink smoke kind of starts engulfing this creature, and you just you're giving it this look like I'm so sorry. You see as the eyes on it start to dim. And it kind of sways a bit. Until finally, it passes out. Oh. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it was just enough. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to work. I mean, kind of we peak, have peak eight in. hours to find a way to, um, to help her and get back and fix her. Before, well, before she wakes up. Yeah. All right. And that's not even determining how long it's going to be huge. If or, I notice that uh, it goes to sleep, I'm going to go back over to the table. Or I'm going to walk walk over here. What did she do? Just put her to sleep. Oh, okay. She's sleeping. She is sleeping. I almost say it, and I stop. It's like it. She is sleeping. I'm going to see if I can find anything else over here before we move on. Then I'm going to go over can here to the table again and just look through every possible thing on that table. Um... Actually, no, it's... I wouldn't be assisting. I'd be making sure nothing's going to come out of that big door. So, yeah. 
Kira, you're looking through these papers on the table, and it's just test notes of Amelia. Like, um, day one, patches of scales appear on the body. Day 15, um, wings start to sprout. Day 30, she goes on all fours. And with each a couple weeks is this transformation of a human to whatever she is now. Um, the last note that you see is um, subject basically succumbing to be still um, thinking, losing humanity. Losing ability to decipher right from wrong. Basically turning into an animal. But that's all the notes that you find. <clears throat> Are there any other like potions that I would be able to identify on the table at all? Mm. Left behind. No, you're looking, and it just looks like they're just like test potions that someone was trying to like mix up. Okay. Like to pile up all the stuff, um, kind of over here in this little nook. All the uh, bodies? Yeah, the bodies, the all the yeah, all the food. I'm just piling gotcha. it all up over there. All the drakes. <laughs> yep. Just Yeah, yeah Valen's like just staying watch on that stone door, making sure uh, uh does he still hear the chanting? Yes. All of you make yeah. another deck save. Oh goody. Maybe I'll pass one one of these days. <laughs> nope. Nope. Uh, that was 15. a fucking two oh for a total of four. 15? 18. 22. 23. 22. Um, anyone who got over a 16? I don't think anyone did. Or you... wait. <laughs> oh, gosh. You hear another massive earthquake. I don't think we have much time left. Yeah, she's on her ass like, oh, God. <laughs> Baritone, Baritone's not even, Baritone's in no mood right now. He's not even, we, like, doing this have... normal, like, haha, winky face. He's just, he just offers a hand down to you. Yeah. We got no time. We got to try to find who's responsible stop this shit and try to help Amelia as much as we can. <clears throat> yeah she must go on right that's yep. life and then she'll I don't know if there's going to be any flying me to the, I don't know if there's going to be any fly me to the moon tonight head on so, over yeah. Yeah, we, we head up to the door and I kind of let them know like um, we let them know about like hey we found out she's a like her name is Amelia. She is currently past the fuck out. <laughs> and we just essentially run them through like they're what they're doing. Yeah. No one gets out alive. Correction. We keep one alive. Just ask questions. Bear Maybe. in mind, I said alive, not unharmed. Colin kind of nods as he reaches blood. into his pouch. And he pulls out that like steel mask he was wearing before and just <laughs> which clue clue that's kind of his I'm <laughs> the that's Doom Slayer mode basically. <laughs> Baritone snaps his fingers. And his suit just goes to black. <clears throat> just to be this nice little nice nice heather gray, this nice nice gray suit. It's just black suit. Kira's gonna kind of mutter under her breath and 
her clothing is going to turn to like this like flowing robe of the deepest black and like dark purples hewn through it. And that is also the symbol of it's fucking go time. And uh, we're just going to look at each other. Let's do this. Luck be a lady tonight. And I'm assuming y'all are walking through that door. And heading towards the door. Okay. So you all start walking through this door and you enter this lit up chamber. And in the center of this chamber, this chamber is probably about 50 feet tall. And you see just this massive statue of this five-headed dragon. If you're all from the area and know your deities, Tiamat. <laughs> Baritone sees that and is like, fuck. That's not good. Yeah. And you hear he the chanting at, getting louder. He looks at Valen. Evil dragon god. Not good. <laughs> you guys make your way yeah, further. Just nods. You guys make your way further into this cavern. Until you come into this very well lit up room you feel the heat coming rushing onto you guys as you enter this chamber and you see these cultists kind of surrounding what appears to be this pedestal in the center of the room with the head cultist a woman with jet black hair chanting in a spell circle in the very center of this room I would need all of you to get your characters on the map. Por favor. I'm trying, but it's oh. not. Here, I got oh, you, boo. It's more oh. than this. So, I, I found it. it. Tactics wise. I um down here i'm guessing yep you guys walk in um you hear there we go is there like a path like a path to walk over here to these bridges from here yes there is okay But there's no way to get from those platforms to the center platform, correct? No, what you see is what is going on. There's just be pillars be about, connected be by bridges. Jump to get between those. So either... Where's the uh, statue of uh, Tiamat? You guys passed it. It was in the room before. Oh, okay. I thought it was like in this fucking room. Okay. No, 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 no. Five cultists, five okay. heads. And someone goes left, someone goes right, rest, focus on middle. You see, as the woman in front of you all near this spell circle kind of start chanting in draconic, the spell circle glowing brighter and brighter with each line that she Go. keeps speaking. Ari is going to charge bear, bear. straight up dash oh, straight God out. damn it. <laughs> Before all That's of all right. you. I did that, I was like, y'all go to the side. <laughs> fight all the Valen. Before you can get there, you hear the woman say, Rise, Melkog. Serve under Tiamat's name. And the spell circle lights up the entire room. And you hear this god awful roar. And you see this come out 
of the portal. Oh, fuck. Oh, goody. This is fine. And you see as the cultists drop dead. Oh. No need to go left, guys. <laughs> Including the one who summoned it. Yeah. And you see as their souls kind of float up and enter this dragon. What was the name she yelled out? Melkog. M-E-L-K-O-G. Would I have to know what that is? It is a servant of Tiamat. So it's not Tiamat. This is not no, Tiamat. No, it is this not is Tiamat. No, this is Melkog, a servant Would this of be considered a fiend? No. It is just a straight-up dragon. Well, I'm asking because Tiamat's considered a fiend, even though she was formerly a dragon. No, she. this one is not a fiend. Fuck. I want one of my plans. And you see, as this dragon slowly kind of floats down, landing on this pedestal, and it looks at all of you, and it kind of just lets out this loud... The heads, other heads kind of breathing fire. And I need all of you to roll for initiative. Uh, no one's close to me, so... Uh, dirty 20. Okay, give me one second. Well, I had my fun. Time for y'all to have yours. <laughs> like how Fallen is in fact the one closest to it. Let's go. I'm gonna let y'all know right now, I have a... I have, I have one play that is gonna get me killed. I thought I had a play, but it's not considered fiendish. And this thing doesn't, this ability doesn't work on dragons, on draconic beings. Okay, so what did you get, Valen? Uh, Dirty 20. Kira? 11. Baritone? Um, sorry, that's, uh, 12. Karya? 19. Valen, you're up. <sighs> Falls to the wall. He's gonna go, he's gonna come in swinging. He's not good at much anything but combat, so he's just gonna deal damage. Alright, that's gonna be a 23. That'll hit. That's gonna be a dirty 20. Okay. And then another 23, so that. And he's gonna use uh, his two level two smites. Okay. Roll that damage. All right, so... Aren't you? <laughs> so what was the damage for... Uh, yeah, that's right. That would have been uh, 52 damage. Right. Oh, damn. Okay. And if it tries to move away from me, I'm going to use my reaction to make an opportunity attack. What's the reach for that? For me? For the opportunity attack, because you're currently 15 feet away from it. Oh, well, I would have moved forward to swing. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So my, yeah. my glaive has a reach of uh, 10. Got it. Okay. Does that end your turn? Mm hmm. Karia. All right. Karia's going to move. Oops.
And she's gonna swing at it. Okay. Does a 21 hit? Oh, that hits. Okay. That's 13. Okay. Wait, 13 damage? Yep. Okay. And then she's gonna take her... Next attack. Twenty-two to hit. That'll hit. Seventeen damage. Okay. And then she's gonna do what she should have done before she attacked and go into a rage. All right. I keep forgetting that. That's fine. Does that end your turn? Yep. Baritone. Just remember, you're resistant to everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Except psychic. Except psychic. If this has a psychic breath, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> the dragon knew. What broken dragon bullshit? <laughs> yeah, what the? F <laughs> what in the name of TMN is this shit? <laughs> I get one can turn things into mind flayers, but come on, which I appreciate you not using that guy. I appreciate you not using that guy. Not, or not the Beholder bullshit. one, because I know damn good and well, I had a feeling that was, like, on the tip of your tongue. Yeah, gotta, gotta love the Brain Stealer Dragons. Yeah, so Baritone's gonna move up. Uh, hang on, let me double check this. Sorry. Um, Keep in mind, as long uh, as I can land hits, I can I can lock it lock its movement. I am going to cast... Uh, um, nah, because that's not going to do anything that I need to do right now. Uh, I'm going to attempt, uh, pyrotechnics. Uh, I'm essentially going to hit right in the middle of its, like, like right in front of its eyes, essentially. Um, so I'm going to move... Yeah, so I move forward uh, like five feet just to kind of get within a comfortable 60. So that way I can do 10 feet from there and not hit. Okay, never mind. I'm going to move forward five more feet. So that way when I hit it, it doesn't hit any of uh, any of my peoples. Okay. Uh, so it needs to make a con save. 16. 19. Okay, so it saves. Um... And then as a bonus action, uh, I'm going to cast um, shit, I can't remember. Is anybody still hurt? Karia we... is slightly, but not enough that it needs to be worried about. Yeah, plus uh, Val Valen still has 35 lay on hands. Yeah. That'll so be... I can, that'll be I can handle me and Karya. That'll be uh, my turn. Okie dokie. Kira! Alright, um... Let's see... I'm going to move up. Oh, I gotta to about right there, and then I am going to <clears throat> summon a hound of ill ill omen right next to me that is going to target the dragon. Hold on. What does, what does that do exactly? So uh, at <clears throat> At sixth level, you gain the ability to call forth the Howling Creature of Darkness to harass your foes. As a bonus action, you can spend three sorcery points to magically summon a Hound of Ill Omen to target one creature you can see within 120 feet. 
Hound uses dire wolf stats. See the monster manual or appendix C with the following mm -hmm. changes. It's size medium, not large, and it counts as a monstrosity, not a beast. It appears with a number of temporary hit points equal to half your sorcerer, sorcerer level. So it has um, 16. four extra hit uh, points. Four, four extra temporary hit points, okay. Um, it can move through other creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain. It takes okay. five force damage if it ends its turn inside an object. So okay. it, it takes it, dire wolf stats is what you said? Yes. And at the start of its turn, the hound automatically knows its target's location. If the target was hidden, it is no longer hidden from the hound, which that doesn't really matter. Does it do... I'm trying to think, because I know the one that was in the other campaign did, like, it fucked with... Dis it, it caused disadvantage, and I'm like, I don't know if that was a homebrew thing or... If oh, no, that was homebrew. Damn was it. Homebrew. Oh, I was hoping. I was bro, like, bro, this thing's got disadvantage? Hound. Let's well, fucking thing. go! If you can get that wolf around the back of it, that would that be considered flanking? Mm -hmm. Though, to be fair, though, it does have six heads. It's got probably kind of hard yeah. to flank. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Blinding six it? of those fucking heads would have been, was already like a stretch. I was like, all the heads are kind of connected at one point, so they can't be too far spread apart. No, oh, we're not see. doing this in-out, in-out shit with you. Sorry, dog is oh, being all fucking. It can use its action only to attack its target. It can make opportunity attacks, but only against its target. It essentially like, I basically tell it to stick it, and it just attacks that until it's get him more. All right. Um. Additionally, while the hound is within five feet of the target, the target has disadvantage on saving throws against any spell you cast. The hound disappears if it is reduced to zero hit points, if its target is reduced to zero hit points, or after five minutes. So. So now it, it, uh, the dragon has disadvantage on all spell saving throws against you. Right. Damn it. Okay. We're friends, though. This this dog knows me, right? That's, that's yeah. Cool. That's not how this works. <laughs> oh come nice on, yeah, be cool. <laughs> it, oh, excuse me? Cool. Did you just say be just cool? Teasing. What? I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. And that also counts. As I know. Time. I had a full on like thing going on with the Full Metal Alchemist <laughs> fucking beast. I understand. Okay. Uh, the other thing Edward I need to do real quick. Uh, monsters. Let's see. All right, so uh, um, I'm going to roll its initiative to put it in the order, and that is a seven total for the uh, hound's initiative. And you said seven? Yes. Okay. Um, you just want to use the hit points. Or are you going to track the hit points? Yourself? Um, the hit points are direwolf, correct? Yes. Okay, I'll keep track. So it says 37, or do you want me to roll the hit points? Nope, I got it. Okay. I'll leave that to you then. Um, and then that was a bonus action, so... Now with my action, I am going to cast <clears throat> Dissonant Whispers on the uh, dragon, which is a wisdom save. Okay. And you said it has disadvantage? Correct. That's a 10. That does not save. So, it will take five points of psychic damage as this melody fills its ears and just makes it kind of like real. And it now must also 
attempt to get away from me. Um, must immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far as its speed allows away from me. Creature doesn't move into obviously dangerous ground, such as fire or a pit. On a successful save, takes half as much damage and doesn't move away. Um, um, so that, well, that means probably... Valen and uh, Karia have opportunity of attack. That was my plan all along. <laughs> all right. Me and you are just going to be in the back just yelling shit at this <laughs> fucking thing. Like, All right, hey, fuck so you! I got a 26 to hit, so currently it cannot move. <laughs> yeah, the moment I hit it, it cannot move for the until it's next turn. Wait, door. hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Kira, can you read mm -hmm. that one more time in moving away? Does it, does it get, does it make, or does it uh, avoid opportunity attacks? No, it does not say that. It just well, says no, Sentinel. to move no, as far what I'm as saying it, speed allows away from me. There, there's uh, some stuff where it's like it does not, like it, it. It's moving and you can't hit it. Essentially, it does not say gotcha. that. It just I, says, even with Sentinel. With but, my digital has, table, if it does not state that it does not take opportunity of attack, then it takes opportunity of attack. Okay, yeah, it doesn't say That's that. Just, it just says okay. that it won't move into dangerous terrain like so it won't jump in the pit or anything like that i mean I it's, it, it's flying so you know yeah, yeah i've i dealt uh 14 damage to it and its movement speed is zero until 14 damage yep and karia what was the damage you did well karia got a nat 20 so i haven't rolled the damage yet ah, brutal critical brutal critical <laughs> His encounter was supposed to be hard. <laughs> the fuck, guys? <laughs> 17 action, damage. Action economy, my friend. Action economy. Good gracious. Oh, wait, no, wait, it's 19 damage because she has the plus two because raging. It, your girl came to play. Okay. And this is with Brutal Critical? Yep. All right, Kara, does that end your turn? Uh, yes, that's action and bonus action. Um, I've moved where I want to. Actually, let me make sure. Do I just have to hit the edge of the thing, or do I need to hit, like, center mass for distance? Uh, I would say center. OK. It's probably still good enough for right now. So yes, I will be done. Okay. Mm, let me take a look here. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, Karia, you have six attacks coming at you. All right. 20. Yep. 23. Yep. 22. Yep. A 28. Yep. Jesus. <laughs> 11. Nope. One more. And a 19. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> it's on five of six. Jesus. <laughs> Holy shit, we're getting fucked. <laughs> well. Sorry, my dog keeps playing this in out, in out bullshit with me. Oh, I know that game. It's getting on my nerves. No. Uh, Karia just got hit by five of six attacks. <laughs> Ow. Waiting on the damage. Resist. So, um, you see as these dragon heads kind of look at you, they're, like, looming over you, Karia, and, um, the very top head kind of just, like, spruits out, like, this poison damage, but it just, like, 
flies over your head because of how small you are. The rest of the heads are pretty locked on, and you take 38 points of damage. That's all halved, right? Nope. It is, um... Is it already halved? Is it all psychic damage? Oh, no, that's right, because you do get fucking... Bear totem. Bear totem. Bear totem. Bear totem. Bear totem. <laughs> 19 points. Yeah, there you go. Queen's like, damn it, I want to kill someone. <laughs> I'll get, I'll, 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 I'll get my, I'll get my chance. I'll get my chance. I'm just waiting. Let's, I will get, I was about to say. Queen is like, I'm going to keep running these one shots. She's get a willing TPK. to kill the goodest boy. <laughs> I mean, I could have just thrown in a Tarask if I really wanted to. You could have. Rude. But we wouldn't be sitting in this room fighting it. <laughs> we would have done this thing called run. <laughs> <laughs> with the, with the theme music, run. <laughs> Ice on the door. That'll close it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's Run. its turn. No, 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 no. <laughs> it is the Beast of Ill Omen's turn. So what do you want it to do? Well, it's going to run up there. All, all it can do is run up and attack. So um, pretty much has a bite. So is the target a creature? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Because it does say it has to su succeed on a if it hits. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's a monstrosity. Oh, okay, then I, I would, guess. I would assume so. Mm. So, 20 plus 5. It got a nat 20 for a 25 for its bite. <laughs> That's two d six plus three. Well, it's right. It says here. No, it's normal is two d six plus three, so double that. Yeah. <clears throat> or four d six. So it takes nineteen points of piercing damage. Gracious. And I guess that's its turn. Yeah. Fallen, just you're up. Snarling with bits of dragon hanging out of its mouth. <laughs> you know what? It's it's just time to burn through all these smites. Let's do this. <laughs> Come on, baby. Give me give me give me one of them delicious crits. I want to use this dice this time. Right, that's probably gonna miss. Uh, dirty 20. Mm-hmm. Near 20, yes! Why? You gonna, gonna get smoked. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna use... Uh, let me... I'll, I'll just roll the damage. Give me a second. Hang on. I gotta actually do some math here. <laughs> math using math rocks? What is this? What? This baloney. 72 damage. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, did I hear that right? The yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> If you smite on a crit, the smite doubles too. And I still and have a second level. Your left. Highest, I was gonna say I you used your highest six one. D eight on one of the <laughs> How do you do it? Now here's the catch. Here's the problem. I've got one smite left. Singular. 
Did you hear what she just said? What? How the fuck well, do you do it? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Queen's just like, fuck you guys. I went full nuke. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I see the wolf. <laughs> see? Kari next to me, I see the guys behind me. I take a few steps back. I'm reminded of Amelia. I'm holding the glaive, hold it in the javelin's position, bring it back as the entire blade starts to glow with radiant energy and throw it for the dragon's chest. Through the dragon's chest. <laughs> And the glaive fall, flies all the way through and lands in the lava. Fuck! <laughs> so you all see this as this light, radiant glaive flies through the air. Impaling through this thing. You hear a loud shriek coming out of its six heads as it falls and collapses on the ground. And you guys are out of an initiative. Karia I'm going to immediately go over to Karia and use all 35 hit points, or 35 lay on hands to heal her. So how much does she get? 35. Um, you also you. see um, Kira Don't as your glaive. beast kind of just disappears. Oh, yeah. And uh, Kari's gonna see if she sees that missing script anywhere. Um, I mean, it's not lying around on the ground. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the head cult, the cult cultist's Where did I body. Put it? There we go. See if she had it. Oh, just put it there so we can see. Um, Valen, you like do. Corby's very salty with me. <laughs> you do search. Uh the body of the head cultist, and you do indeed find, like, this stone kind of slab with ancient draconic writing on it. And, uh, <clears throat> and like, kind of hold it up for the rest of the guys, like, found it! I'm gonna go up to the dragon and, like, are, the, are all the heads, like, different types? Mm-hmm. It would look like. I'm gonna take, like, <clears throat> carefully with, like, cloth between i'm gonna like try to fucking rip like teeth out of these dragons mouths one from each of them okay um roll just... a i'd probably be using dagger to like dig them out if i have to make a survival check <clears throat> I mean, I'll assist. Actually, where did my glaive go? <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you asked. So you threw your your glaive. Full spear. Mode. Full spear. Yep. It is at did the go, very top of this lava. door. <laughs> what seven? What? <clears throat> yep. Seventeen for uh, survival. Yep, you're able to pull the teeth out of its mouth. All right, now I need to climb this door. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Baritone is gonna check that door. He's he's moving around the dragon. He's moving around the cultist. He's taking everything he has not to kick the fucking thing into the lava, but he's also like, this thing might be useful. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, you check the door and you're able to open the door pretty easily. I never Wait, used any of my fourth level slots either. <laughs> I don't um, think I've been hit. <laughs> Fallen, make me a freaking acrobatics check at disadvantage, because fuck you. <laughs> I'll, I'll help. You are in heavy armor. You like, know what? I was about to I'll say you're in that, heavy armor. That's a nat one. <laughs> um, due to the heat that's coming off of this lava, you're like trying to climb up, and the sweat from your hand just like you try to grab it and you <laughs> slip. <laughs> Uh, that mask like bounce like comes off the face. Just... Ow. Baritone just... just looks at him. 
and just disregards like god damn it i need my weapon Hmm. um i don't know if i got a spell for that I don't, I don't know if you'll allow that, but I was going to try to use Chill Touch on it and then have it, like, move it so it, it drops it. <laughs> Please don't have it land on me. <laughs> um, what's on, like, do I, can I tell what's on the other side of that door? Um, you feel a slight breeze kind of coming in as you open the door, so you kind of assume it leads outside. Did we come through a back way? No, we came in through the front door, but the thing closed after us. Hmm. Remember that stairwell? Yep, and y'all never found a uh, lever or button to, for it. So. Yeah, way to reopen it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still trying to figure out how to get my glaive. Hmm. Baritone's going anything... to look at uh, I don't have anything to throw at it. Kind of point towards the thing. I think that's probably the way out. I think you're right. <clears throat> Maybe if we go back and talk to the monk, they might have some ideas on how to help Amelia or maybe even who she is. You guys go. He uh, scoops up the uh, head bitch. <laughs> like fireman carries. He's like, well, at least she's got some more food whenever she wakes up. And take it back to her. Yeah. <clears throat> Baritone just kind of looks at the rest of y'all. Good job. Really good job. Um, I genuinely thought we weren't going to make it through that. You're always going to have something up your sleeve. But then again, that's life. And as funny as it may seem. Some people get their kicks, and he's just walking, stomping on a dream. He's just rolling out. Oh, no, I clicked on him. That's why. So I won't let it get me down. And he's just, he's walking back towards uh, the room with Amelia in it. This final world keeps spinning around. His fate fades out. <laughs> And what are the rest of you doing? Faria's gonna head outside. I was about to say, I don't think I have a way to get my glaive down. I think I'm gonna have to leave it there. Mm. I don't have, like, any other weapons to throw at it to see if I, I mean, can knock it loose. you see some rocks on the ground. I mean, I'll throw a rock at it. Would it help? Would it get him at not disadvantage if I, like, hold my hands here and, like, kind of boost him up a little bit? I was gonna say, how tall is this door? <laughs> Uh, this door is about 20 feet tall. It's oh. a big door. It was probably well, the door they were going to let this dragon out of, but you know. <clears throat> but no. Um, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll throw a rock at the glaze, see if I can, like, knock it loose. Um... <laughs> No, do another acrobatics. An advantage if advantage if uh, here is helping you. Yeah, I'll help. That'll be a nineteen then. <laughs> Where are you standing in regards to this, by the way? Um, I'm assuming if the glaive is up there, I'm like right there. Can you roll me a deck safe, please? Me? Mm-hmm. Advantage, disadvantage? Regular roll. Fourteen plus five. Nineteen. So you throw this rock up at your glaive, you see it kind of, like, start to fall, and then you realize, oh shit, I should probably move before I get impaled by this thing. And you move as the glaive kind of just falls. <laughs> <laughs> And you see as it lands blade first into the ground. Please don't be snapping in two. <laughs> if it's just snaps like in two, it will now like... become my short sword. 
And he, yeah, he's like, please don't be stuck in the ground. And he goes to pull it out. That comes out fairly easy. <sighs> it slides onto his back. Huh? Picks up his mask, puts that in his pouch. And he starts walking out the door. Okay. So you all kind of um, get out, and as you're getting closer, you start hearing the sounds of outside. And you kind of come out <clears throat> out of this other would... cave, almost. I would have waited here for uh, Baritone to get back and then walked out with him. Yeah, um, I'm going to let out the whistle for Gavin. Okay. Um you kind of you whistle. And it takes a bit. You whistle again. And then you kind of see these rocks fall from above you. And you look as Gavin drops down from, <laughs> from, the, <laughs> from the ledge above. Victoria is <laughs> Kari is just going to be calling really loudly out to Pork Chop to see if she can call him. <laughs> Roll a deck save, please. <laughs> Okie dokie. Did Pork Chop follow Goffin? <laughs> How did Pork Chop get up there? <laughs> With sheer determination. <laughs> That's an 18. With the power of boar. <laughs> My power of boar. You see as more rocks come ro rolling off from above, and you look, it's and you just see rolling down like yeah, more or less. You just see pork chop just rolling Rawr! down the freaking mountainside, <laughs> <laughs> landing on his side in front of you. <laughs> Wouldn't be any more graceful than that, huh, buddy? Just kind of rubs his belly and then gives it a good pat. <laughs> Gavin or Valen just leans on Gavin, just. I'm glad to see you, buddy. <laughs> Did you have fun while we were in there? I just glares at pork chop. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did pork chop go up there and you had to follow him? His ears kind of go back. <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> pork chop, you troublemaker. He just kind of just licks his snout happily. <laughs> While all of you are waiting, Baritone, what are you doing? Um, so I'm dragging the main cultist person back and uh, kind of tossing them with the rest of the bodies, essentially. Um, is she still big as shit, or is she gone down? Um, no. At this point, size? she she is back to her normal size, but she's still passed out. Okay. Yeah. So Baritone's gonna kind of put the body on top of the other ones. Um, checking the body over just to verify, like, there's nothing else on her, right? It was just that sc that script. Um. Yeah, it was more or less just the script. Um, she's kind of wearing this uh, golden amulet with the symbol of Tiamat on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of decorated in these different colored like gemstones and whatnot. Um, she has like a ceremonial dagger strapped to her belt. But that's basically what she what she had on her. I'm, t I'm taking all that. Okay. And not even like a, ooh, goodies, just like, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. Like, you don't, like, God, I hate everything. Like, he just, the baritone's like at a point where he's just like, I fucking hate everything about this. Like, like just like, just utter disgust in this person and doing what they were doing. And just, you know, rips the stuff off of them. And like, he just kind of like stacks it, sticks in his bag and kind of looks over at Amelia and just shakes his head. I'm just like, all right, we'll go, we will. Is she now small enough to fit through that door? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. 
so we have to be quick about this. <clears throat> okay. I figure out a way to get her back to normal in some way. Maybe the monks will help us. Okay. Baritone's gonna is that is that table pretty much like empty now? Yeah. Okay, Baritone's gonna essentially kind of move the table, like dragging it essentially, and just kind of like dropping it up over the door. Like where the door would be. Okay. Just as a like kind of makeshift thing. And then um he is going to write in I guess blood. Fuck it. He's gonna take the ceremonial dagger and like just kind of dip it in the blood of the fucking douchebags <laughs> and just kind of write on the wall as best he can. Amelia Baritone will be back. Please stay here. And he's just gonna hope that she understands that and is going to and he puts it like near where the bodies are, for, like where she's gonna eventually wake up and be like, oh, food. Nom nom nom. <laughs> he imagines at least. Uh, and then Baritone is gonna kind of head out and kind of meet back up with the rest of the people. Okay. Um so all of you are are waiting and eventually Baritone comes out. And as he walks out, he snaps his fingers again. A little, little bit of blood that was on it from like carrying the cultist leader. He kind of just and it goes back to the gray suit clean. We make our way back to the monks. Okay. By the way, I'm definitely going to take a look at that fucking script. Okay. Yeah, fuck them. I don't give a shit. I'm not <laughs> reading it out loud, but I'm definitely like, watch, like, Baritone's like, hey, uh, Ben, let me take a look at that. But what about the fighter storm? About the what? I remember they said if anyone was to read it, it would be there, it would summon the fighter storm. Yeah, I think that's what they were doing in the place. That was the fire storm. I thought they were trying to summon that dragon. Yeah. Need to. Oh, he just baritone's like kind of holding out his hand like waiting to see if you'll give it to him it's in your hand cool is this just like a stone tablet like i'm like 10 commandments looking fucking thing mm -hmm. cool you got a bit of paper looking over at kira um <clears throat> she digs through her pack real quick um yeah, I think I have some parchment in here somewhere. <clears throat> Pulls out. It's it's not like fancy or anything. Just takes the parchment and then does like a rub on the parchment. Just translating it because I imagine it's in draconic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he just takes it and does like a rub to get the text off of it, and then takes it, folds it, and then kind of hands it back to Kira. We'll uh. I know there's a way for me to understand this kind of stuff, or at least somebody I can can teach us how to read Draconic. Yeah. We'll just we'll uh, we'll see what the hell they were trying to do with this, and maybe this will give us some sort of opening into this if the monks turn out to be well useless, which Who knows? not really holding my breath. Well, they said that the the tablet was only lost for a few days. Yeah, a few days. They were man. They didn't manage to stop something big enough to come in through their place. It like Baritone's very much like very much like I. These guys fucking suck. Like, there's <laughs> no way. Like, how do you fuck this up that badly? Why do you just have it out on like display? If this is like a super important thing, I get like relic, but like, why is that not like in perfect view of a lot of people? It wasn't. It was in a side room. That's what I mean. Why is it not like easy, like big display case? Like, hey, so that way if somebody tries to do some dumb shit, <laughs> they're gonna have to be out in the middle of everything, not in a fucking closet in the side. I'm pretty not gonna sure the that I'm the not gonna put don't the want people reading that. So I'll have to well, do no, you, no, you cover it, but it's just like fucking. Just saying, you National don't put the nuclear treasure. launch codes in Maybe a goddamn. Maybe Baritone should be the next head monk of this temple then. 
Baritone <laughs> wants nothing to do with dragons right fucking now, other than how to undragon a person. <laughs> That's life. All right, yeah, so we get back there. Yeah. Um, immediately looking for the head monk. Yeah, immediately looking for fucking um, Orkum. Orkum, yep. Looks stinky. Um, so you do see Orkum. Uh, he is currently like meditating yes. with the with the other monks as you walk in to the temple. And uh, he doesn't notice you guys coming in. Obviously, he's in a meditative trance. Orkum. We got your rock. <laughs> um, Orkum kind of opens his eyes and he looks at all of you. Ah, you've returned. And he gets up and walks over to you guys. Glad to see you all were worried. He lights a cigar. Did you get the script? I gave it back to you, Valerie. Oh, you gave it back to me? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Valen, he, like, and I, I'm kind of noticing, like, this you seemed worried bit, and I'm kind of wondering, can I roll an insight check on them, see if something's up? Um, sure. Because they don't seem too excited that we're back what potentially with what they're looking for um that would be a 15. there's nothing Baritone's just being, he, he Baritone's holds just being an asshole <laughs> baritone's just mad right now yeah he holds up he holds up the rock <clears throat> um like obviously you see that he is happy that the script is back but because of his position He's kind of keeping it cool. Uh, um, okay. But he kind of, he smiles and uh, he accepts the the script. Oh, praise Bahamut. And he kind of gives it to one of the other monks who kind of bring it back to another empty room. He might and, want to put in a room without a window. And... Markham nods. Well, he noted. It was, it was taken by a, a cult that worshipped the five-headed dragon. And the head monk kind of looks, <clears throat> rightly so, concerned. Uh, Kyra will pull <laughs> out the the robe that she uh, took out of the chest and like flare it out. Will, baritone's gonna hold up the necklace. Look familiar? We thought more importantly, was long gone. More importantly, she's going to take the stack of papers for the, from the experimentation. And they were trying to experiment with people and trying to turn them into dragons. One of them survived and is still there. We would like to try to find out if there's a way to get her back to her former self and he'll, she'll hand over the uh the stack of notes from Emilia um Orkum is clearly disturbed by the news that he's just heard he's kind of looking through the notes and as he's reading them just the look on his face is just oh my god they had so summoned this creature, uh, another multi-headed dragon that we were able to kill before it was able to escape. This was called kind of looks at the rest of the group. What was its name? Borg, Borgden, something. Malcog. Malcog. That. Thank you, Baritone. That one. I'm terrible with names. Malcog. How were they Serpent? able to? It killed well, five of them with when they summoned your, With your scripts and the souls of five cultists. 
Orkum doesn't know how to react to all of this. But you know, what makes me kind of curious, the uh, creature that they created, sorry, the person that they person that... warped into a pseudo dragon had just the oddest sort of reaction to something. It's lovely uh, smell you guys, incense you guys burn here. Reminds me of cinnamon. That is the scent of the incense, yes. Hmm. Amelia had a very odd reaction to cinnamon. Wonder why that is. I wish I knew. Insight check. You and me both, monk. You and me both. Well, that's an eleven, so I don't think I'm gonna get anything. <laughs> baritone Nothing. Baritone is Baritone's very much going to insight check, but he's also like very much looking at him like I don't trust you, I don't trust any of your fucking monks here. Y'all dragon people are fucking weird right now, and I'm kind of <laughs> mad that you just have a rock that can do this or lead to this. Uh, insight check that is going to be a 19. He's telling the truth. <laughs> There's no hint of malice instead or anything. Of, instead of just hiding this in a room, would it not be smart to just destroy it? That is not Bahamut's wish. Well, well, maybe we could talk. Very to him about existence it. has into the lives, into the lives of eight people and warped a ninth. Oh no, there's more than nine. And he points to the stack of papers. But hey, what do I know? I'm just. There been any missing persons reports from around here? Um, you would probably have to check the jailhouse. Back in the city. Have there been any of your monks that might have been acting out of the ordinary, outside their normal schedules, disappearing at odd hours that you might have because noticed? Someone would have not to know about the script. Nothing that I'm aware of. We'll uh, take our payment now, Orkham, if you'd be so kind. Of course. Um... And he kind of motions one of his other monks to go get the payment, and um, the monk returns with the sack of gold along with the ruby dragon head. And Orkham hands it to you, Baritone. Baritone is holding the skull and holding the ruby and just... so happy but he's also like at what god cost? damn it i was about to say like, kira's god kira's fucking... kira's gonna look at him and like with those don't you do it don't you get soft <laughs> he's not gonna give it back i mean he's catching the fucking imagination he's he looks at kira and it's like hands it to you just like <sighs> have you thought of a name for it yet Working on something. We might need to like contract uh, one of the arch wizards, see if they can do anything about this. You see, Valen kind of sits there thinking for a second. But I think I wonder, I wonder if a true, I wonder if a polymorph would work. <laughs> I could, polymorph I could try person. something. What you got there, Valen? And kind of reaches and pulls out his holy symbol. I could go up and attempt to channel divinity. 
see if I might be able to, if I can't properly ret return her to her body, I might be able to at least clear her mind. We'll uh, put it back into town and we'll get a, gather up some folk, cleric types, anybody. If I take some time, I might be able to I do Because I do something. have a channel divinity that basically lets me, a group of people equal to my charisma, have advantage on mental checks for a period of time. Like I said, that and we might be able to use that to help her get back to her uh, normal mental state. DM, correct? I'm I'm confused because I don't I magic. I don't often. Um, when it's something that you learn, is that something that like when you level up, you can change those out, or is that a like? If you learn, I think it, it depends it's permanent. on the type. If you have to prepare it, you can switch them out. Okay. So I'd have uh, think, to wait until well, like with... a level up or, or to like, get new spell slots to then learn oh, okay. something. Yes. You get yeah, you can okay. have a like basically you have a set amount of spells you learn as you level up and you can prepare mm. a certain amount of those per day. Well but no, if you that's haven't already for like no, that's for you. Because I have learned, you have prepare. Are bards able to cast every spell they learn? I'm not allowed to cast all of them. Like, and I have like the book, but like I have, I can learn these spells. I'd be able to They're find not... an alchemist that yeah, might be able to grab help. a little bit of everybody. Yeah, because mine doesn't say prepare, mine say learn. Yeah, mine too. Um, okay, yeah. So every spell you learn is on your prepared list, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So baritone, this is baritone's future stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Vaughn will definitely assist with that. But as far as, like, I think because it seems like this was done alchemically, I think an alchemist would be our best bet to reverse this process. The, but yeah, well, it mean, might reverse he, the physical effects, and we'd have to use a lot of therapy to fix the mental ones. Absolutely. But... He looks at uh, Orkham, unless your god can spare some time. Could definitely try to pray to him and see what he has to say. Would you like me to bring her here? See what your god wants to do about it then. That is what you wish. I wish for it to never have happened. You and me both. Baritone just nods, starts to walk out with his share of the gold. Baritone. Half of, yep. As you make your way out of the temple, you see something flying in the sky. A green-esque creature. Air kind of flowing in the wind as it kind of flies off in the distance with a very familiar shriek. How high up? Pretty high up. How high, Dan? 250 feet. Baritone's gonna look back at Kira. That's lying. <laughs> Dimension door. I'm kidding. You can end this. We can end the episode here. I know that's what you want to do. I just wanted to have another one of my characters riding a dragon as you end it, just for you to get mad as shit. You don't have to let me dimension door. Go ahead. And well, roll, that's the first part. You have you have to pick a fixed point, so you would have to like guesstimate. Yeah. Go which ahead. Is going to be. Go ahead. Current location to any point spot within range, you arrive at that exact spot you desired. There's no rolling for it. It's just I say. Yeah. Well, no, no. That's the thing. You pick back. a spot, Boop. but you have. But if she's flying underneath, as you pick the spot, you teleport there. She's still moving forward. You'd have well, to. Well, no, like, I'm teleporting her. on her. But she's moving. That's not a fixed point because she's in motion. 
Okay. What would you like me to roll then? Uh, roll math. Me a. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like leading Acrobatics a with disadvantage. Acrobatics with mm-hmm. disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Am I allowed to uh, give myself inspiration for this? Sure. Why not? Can okay. Vaughn help him with the trajectory? No. Oh. You guys are inside. <laughs> you have no idea. The only person who has any sort of idea that he's about to do some stupid shit is Kira. <laughs> he's like, that's life. Like, no, no, it's not that's life. Last time you did that. Fair. Fair. Uh, okay. <laughs> Someone just touches your shoulder. Wait. <laughs> Fly me to the moon. Let me dance among the stars. Jupiter, Mars. You want the good news or the bad news? Bad news first. Bad news was? I rolled a nat 20 again. Good news is, second roll was a 14. Plus six is a 20. Plus another six for the Bardic Inspiration is a 26. As he takes a puff of the cigar and just steps through a doorway and lands on fucking Amelia. Because he's all not putting it together initially. Like, and on that he- note, thank you guys so much for stopping by. <laughs> I love you, Sarah. If you're not already, <laughs> hit the subscribe button. This is the some of the shenaniganry you can get over on Dungeon Mechanics. So please make sure you go to twitch.tv slash Dungeon Mechanics and drop a sweet <laughs> little follow there. If not, hit the subscribe button right here over on the YouTube channel where you can catch all of the episodes after the fact. Paul? <laughs> You and I are going to have some words. <laughs> you and I are going to have some words. We're going to have some words. Yep. I am not allowed a turtle. I am not allowed <laughs> bards. I am not. I'm just slowly going to get like, you're allowed a blood hunter, and that is it. You are allowed a ranger. You are No, you, you are, are allowed like... a barbarian with a seven intelligence. 